Welcome to the very first episode of the Bits and Booze Partycast, starring yours truly, Johnny Old School, and the lovable, sexy, cuddly teddy bear that he is, my man Jesse Wood. Yes, the Bits and Booze Partycast, brought to you this week by the third annual Gander Mountain Goat Fest and Lamb Bertha Palooza. Stick your paws in there and shake hands with hooves. That's one of the best goat fests I've actually been to. Um, I mean, we, it's, we do the, the whole kind of like country boy thing on, in Calgary, Alberta here. Um, but that Goat Fest, if it's in your area, definitely check it out. Because um, you'd be surprised at how far you can actually get your arm inside a goat. Yeah, yeah. I went, I went, there, uh, I went there last year for the second annual. And, uh, you know, the wool was warm, but the fetuses were to die for. Really? Really? Well, be- because all of mine died. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, But I'm not a professional by any means. I mean, I got the wristband. I paid my $5 like everybody else. I was just there for the... The experience of it. I'm. I'm not. I'm not concerned with which ones live and die. Fuck them. Yeah, that's understandable. That's, that's understandable. Okay, you win. You win that round. You win that round. <laughs> Anyways, this is the Bits and Booze Party Cast. The Bits and Booze Party Cast, starring Jesse Wood. Let me tell you what hard times are, Daddy. And Johnny Old School. I'm doing coke with a 16-year-old. The Bits and Booze Party Cast, the only podcast that calls your mom back. Day. So yes, I guess... the Fits and Booze Party Cast. We came here to kick ass and podcast, and we're all out of ass. Exactly. So I guess we should, we should start off by explaining like the, the name of the podcast, Bits and Booze, you know, like 8-bit, 16-bit. Remember the fucking bit wars back when video games were like still cool and people didn't argue and fight about them? And there wasn't like some group of women saying, like, oh, they're sexist, or there wasn't like these stupid fucking fanboys saying this franchise is better than others just you're all like little kids and you just fucking love video games that's that's bit that's the, that's back the before thing. the world turned to shit and took video games with it yep exactly before the dark times before the empire <laughs> um and then obviously booze because i'm fucking drunk so and that's really the only way you can do a podcast properly in my opinion, my opinion. it's true me and johnny we like to kick back with some old games we like to kick back with some old booze i like to kick back with some old hookers <laughs> who doesn't Johnny's probably on fucking something, LSD, I don't fucking know. But the point is, Mr. Booze, this is what we got in common. It's, it's, it's a fine powder of mescaline heroin filtered through a cheesecloth. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> as, I, as I say, as I'm trying to sip my beer and I laugh. The good old video games and alcohol, that's where our interests intersect. Exactly. And that's where the podcast starts, baby. Yep. Ooh, wow. So- so let us let us start off by talking about bits. Let us start off by talking about video games and our our most influential video games that you and I have had in our lives. And I suggested, as we were talking on Skype earlier, that we perhaps talk about the Super Mario Brothers franchise because I think if everyone is fairly honest with themselves, they can all acknowledge the fact that Super Mario Brothers is basically the king of all gaming. Nintendo is the king of all gaming. Regardless of what they're doing these days, you know, we, we wouldn't have gotten to the place where we are without Nintendo and Super Mario Brothers. And we're so sorry if that's not obscure enough for your highly hipsterated taste. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. did, I say, did I just say hipsterated? Hip, hipsterated, yeah. Word. Hipsterated. I actually kind of like that, though. I think we should keep that. We should keep that. But yeah, it's, it's uh, Welcome to the Piss and Booze Hipsterated Partycast. <laughs> it's very obvious pants, but it, it's true. Mm-hmm. Mario's pretty much top of the butt mountain. Now, I know I've masturbated to a lot of Mario games before, and um, recently I saw on your YouTube channel that you had masturbated to Mario Brothers 3. Um, how, how was that? Yeah, it, it was uh, it was joyous, as always. <laughs> yeah. A lot of cum, I bet. A lot of cum. Especially on the on that uh, world you're on. That's one of my favorites. I know it's early oh, yeah, on in the well, game, true. but like, yeah. it's yeah, it, it's still it's still yeah. you know, I actually haven't beat it. I've never actually beaten Mario 3 before. It wasn't the one that really? I always played as a kid. Oh, okay. Like, you haven't beat it. You, you should really try to beat it, man, because like yeah. it's it's a lot of fucking fun. Those like that. Have you ever, have you been to the, the eighth world with all like the no. battleships and shit? Oh my god! The last world I got to was the world where everything's giant. Do you know how to get the warp whistles? I don't. Oh my god! You don't know how to get the fucking warp whistles? What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, you can get two warp whistles in the first world, and if you use two of them, you can go straight to the end of the fucking game, um, just in case you want to, or you can go like halfway through the game. Okay, the first warp, warp whistle is I think in the it's in the second or third stage. When we're done the podcast, I'll fucking send you this shit. But there's like these, you know, like, there's these blocks in the background. There's a white one, and you jump on the white one, and you kneel down for like five, ten seconds, and all of a sudden Mario falls behind the background, and like ah, you see him like running some... behind. 
all the sprites. It's like some and, Simon's Quest shit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and then he's running behind the sprites, and then when he runs to the end of the stage where that black part is, he runs behind it, and it takes you like a secret chamber where it shows Toad, and he gives you a warp whistle. And then there's another one in the first in the first um, castle um, on World One where you fight that spiky guy who jumps around. Um, if you have a feather and you like before you go into the door where you go to fight him, if you fly up and over the top, like run across the top there and then drop down, like you actually find a little treasure chest with another warp whistle, and those warp whistles will take you basically anywhere you want to go in the game. I love that, that those those old secrets that games used to have. I mean, yeah, they just don't yeah. make them like that anymore. I and, know. You know. Thing is though, that's like really cool, but like. For me personally, like I, don't, I wouldn't even want to use the warp whistles because I'm having so much fun just seeing all the different levels myself and going through the game. Oh, of course, of course. Like, like my experience with Mario. You know, I had Mario and Duck Hunt when I was like a little fucking infant, like everybody. Mm. But uh, I had a Sega. I was a Sega Genesis kid in the early '90s. I didn't get a Super Nintendo until like maybe 2004 or something when I was like wow. 15 or something. Yeah. And I got a Super Nintendo and I got. Yoshi's Island, which is still one of my favorite platformers Wonderful ever. Wonderful game. Yeah, that game is amazing. And I, and at that time, it was around that time that Super Mario World was getting remade for like the Game Boy Color or the Game Boy Advance or whatever it was. Yeah. And I, I played the shit out of that. I got everything and all the secrets and stuff. So to me, I had never really played Mario 3 that much. And to me, Mario 3, like, just kind of seemed like, okay, there's classic Mario. The, there's the first Mario that's great. Right. And the second Mario is this totally cool. Everything's weird and different, and it's, yep. like it's a whole different thing. And Mario World is like so much more advanced. And Mario Three was just kind of in the middle, and I never really paid it much heed. Yeah. So I'm just not really playing through it for the first time, and it's cool. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, wait till you get to uh, World Seven with all like the pipes and the pipe mazes and shit. That's one of the coolest parts of the game, in my humble opinion. It's it's the second coolest part after Big World. Big World is fucking awesome. Yeah, I love Big World. I <laughs> get a kick out of it. Wicked, man. That's cool um, to stay. It made it big. Big World made a comeback too in Super Mario Sunshine, if I remember correctly, and really? that was badass. Yeah, I have Super Mario Sunshine, Mario Sunshine and I've never underrated. played it. Wait, do I it's still so have it? underrated? I think I still have it. I do still have it. I've never played it. It's like it's the one main Mario game that I still have after not having to like, sell off half my oh, fucking God. collection. To it's like the one main Mario game that like no one ever talks about, but it's like yeah. I, I think personally it's my favorite because I just because I fucking so it's, it's I, like. Would you say that Super Mario Sunshine is like the Final Fantasy Nine of the franchise? Well, Final Fantasy VII is the best Final Fantasy. Yeah, but... yeah, but Final Fantasy IX was amazing, but nobody ever talks about it at all, and I thought it was fantastic. That's true. Final Fantasy IX is a close second for me. I mean, yep. I have my little, I have my nostalgia blinders. I'm fucking so into Final Fantasy VII. Oh yeah. But right. every time I play nine, I get, I'm like, man, this game is incredible, and eight's good too. Eight's really underrated. It gets. I, I agree. Too much I agree. Just eight. Yeah, I, I agree with all of Spoonie's hilarious assertions about how much eight sucked, but at the same time. I still liked it. I, I I can't disagree with anything. Oh yeah, like I can't disagree I, with his I, criticisms that he made exactly. in that video. But yeah, I still liked it. I yeah. love that game. I, I had most still. I had most of the same complaints that he did. So yeah, and I'd love to go back and play it again. It's been a long time. Yep. God, we're getting off on so many tangents. I oh. you fucking just talk about everything. Just fuck it. I mean, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty this much. Podcast is going to be five hours long, people, and you you're know, just you know what, deal with it. You know what Final Fantasy VIII was to me when I was like a kid playing it. I was I was maybe like I don't know, fourteen or fifteen at the time when I played it. Um. It, to me, it was like that game where it's like I was I was wanted to have a girlfriend, and then I, w- I wanted to like play that game because I thought it was like all romantic and I thought she'd like it and I thought like maybe I'd like make her like video games. It was one of those like kind of like sad early teen year like fantasies that you have, which pretty much you would have about pretty pretty much regarding any game that meant anything to you. There's female characters involved in it. Yeah, um, God, the whole like romantic subplot of it, like. It's pretty stupid for. I people. I always fucking loathed Renoa as a character because yep. she's a she's a blank slate. She's just there to be like, yep. to be the girlfriend catalyst that like starts this whole thing. And I mean, I don't know. She's important to the story, but like, she's just like an annoying bitch. I mean, it's been a long ass fucking time since I played the game, yep. so I could be just talking completely out of my ass right now. I think the last time I played through it, I was like fifteen or sixteen. Yeah, that's alright. Uh, I'm pretty much talking out of my ass too, so. Yeah, the whole, like, romantic subplot of it, like, there was this guy who was really into Final Fantasy VIII, and, uh, this guy, he's legitimately the worst human being I've ever met in my entire life. Like, he's wow. a fucking a sociopath, rapist, thief, the kind of guy who'd lie to his best friend's face and steal their fucking games. Why do you know this guy? Um, he was a guy who went to my school. He was a couple grades above me. I think he was uh... already graduated by the time I was, like, in... Fucking eleventh grade, Let's but see. there was a summer when he and I became really good friends. 
And it was during that summer that I first realized what a horrible person he was. And he, and he, <laughs> he stole my Final Fantasy VIII. Oh. And I know he stole it because, because for a while I, I went out with a girl who was his ex. And she confirmed everything that I always suspected about him. That he's a Jeez. fucking thief and a liar. And that he had my fucking game in his house. He's and like shit. I was like blaming it on like my sister's friends. And like yelling and throwing fits and like b- beating people up and throwing them out of my house and just being an asshole. And it was him all along. Jesus. This fucking guy was such a piece of shit. But, like, I remember that, like, and I hate this dude so much to this day. And and he was such a mm, piece of shit. I mean, <laughs> such just a bad, just eh? douchebag. I mean, like, he, and he was, like, he was he was one of these guys who, like, puts on these airs, like, well, you know, I'm, I'm just a sensitive guy and, and no one understands me. And I just, I mean, I'm, I'm really into things that are, like, romantic and stuff. I mean, Yep. You know, it's, it's just one of those things. I mean, and he was he would always go on about Final Fantasy VIII, how it, how it was his favorite game, and he'd buy the fucking necklaces and the merchandise, and fucking wow. Kingdom Hearts is another big thing, and he was so into, like, oh, it's so romantic, you know, and fucking, I'm getting off of the biggest fucking tangent because I just hate this motherfucker so much, but, like, <laughs> so for the longest time, yeah, for the longest time, like, I hate this motherfucker so much that for the longest time, like, he ruined Final Fantasy VIII and Kingdom Hearts for me, too, because that was his other... Wow favorite thing and like it's only recently that i'm able to like separate it from him yeah and be like you know fuck it i really loved those games and they were really good and i see them on my shelf and i'm like i wish i could have the time to go back and play them and they're good games and that's really like one of the like the shittiest things about yeah. human beings is that yeah. you meet a person shitty enough and they will just They'll dump all great. over everything that you love in this world yep. and make it not enjoyable anymore yep. i can't i can't play mario tennis anymore um, because of this one girlfriend I have that I never talk about to anybody, and I'm not about to start now. But let's just say that like the, the whole memory surrounding it, I I can't play Mario Tennis ever again. I simply can't. Yeah. Unless I mean, it's on Virtual Boy. Virtual Boy Mario Tennis, I can I can fully handle. There's like no memories connected to that one at all for some reason. Um, but yeah, it uh, sucks. I mean, like that's just like the circle of like you you have your favorite things. And you have, like, relationships and friendships and people you really care about, and you share those things with them, or you discover those things with them, and then they become your things together as, like, as two people. And then inevitably, people are evil, so they fucking th- just th- throw you overboard, and, yep. and, then you, and then you're left alone, and you can't even enjoy those things that you love anymore. And, like, I mean, we're getting off the subject of video games. <laughs> I am now, but, like, I mean, like, every every single week... On, on on Cartoon Network, I usually have the TV on in the background when I'm at my computer. Every single Saturday, Cowboy Bebop will come on. Yep. And it always reminds me of this girl who was oh, my best man. friend for so long. Fuck. And it's my favorite show ever, Shit. pretty much. But I can't fucking... It, like, hurts me just to watch it even. Yeah, yeah. It's just, like, profound soul sadness. And, like, same yeah. with, like... And, and, like, same girl, like, ruined Gorillas for me. Like, their second album came out oh, in high school. Oh, not Gorillas. And now it's, like, the best album ever made, in my opinion. But now, yeah. every time I hear any song from it, I, like, have to change it because it makes me want to weep like a fucking faggot baby. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> A faggot baby, eh? A faggot baby. Like, I just like I just had this wife, and she just popped out this disappointing faggot baby. And I'm just like, <laughs> back to the drawing board, sweetie. We'll, we'll put this one in the China pit. <laughs> <laughs> the China pit? Yeah, where they throw all the defective female babies. Wow! Wow! I did not know that's where you're going with that. The China Pit, the effective feet. Oh my God! The conjures up just the most Holocaustistic <laughs> image. I don't know if they really do that. It's just I'm no. I'm, I'm sure they don't, shit. but it's hilarious to think about because yeah. I mean, babies dying. How is that not funny? <laughs> Seriously, that's hey, funny hey. shit right there. Right, the bits of booze party the cast, everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mario was great. That game was fucking fantastic. I remember the first oh, time man. I Pursuit jumped on Yoshi, fucking... my life has changed forever. No, no, Yoshi didn't appear to Mario World. I know. I'm I know just... this because my I'm... Mario 3 is a part of the... I'm just saying the first I, I have I Super Mario and All-Stars. Oh, you have the All-Star. Oh, I, that, that's that's great. Yeah, I don't have it on, on regular NES. Oh. I bought a fucking NES. I've told you this before, but now I'm telling the world my shame. <laughs> <laughs> when I graduated high school... um. I didn't get into a, a good college because my life is a fucking nightmare. But um, I did get into a community college, be, um, you know, so whatever. I went to this community college for a couple of years. And because I've lived in poverty my entire life, I had this FAFSA uh, financial aid grant. Yep. And, 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 they, and the government sent me 
uh, I think like thirty five hundred dollars. Wow. Just to 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 live off while oh, I went there. to school. Nice. You should have bought like thirty five hundred dollars worth of weed and then just become a drug dealer, <laughs> and then just, I, that's your career. The government like government sponsored drug dealer. Johnny, if I had if I had known you back then, my life could have been so different. What does that mean? What does that I mean? mean? You could I have you could have told me this when it, when it mattered, and I, I it's could have and I could have been fucking Heisenberg, and yeah. I would have had I would have been rich now because I wouldn't have had fucking Jesse Pinkman to fuck shit up for me. Jesse that fucking Pinkman. rat. Up. Yeah, yeah, he really and his you know, shitty family. Yeah, um, I don't feel too bad for him at the end, but I did feel bad when. Oh man, am I gonna spoil the series for people who haven't seen don't it? Don't spoil it, but man, and no, I can't I can't stay too mad at him because Aaron Paul is just fucking adorable. I love him. <laughs> I love him. He's, he's cute. He's America's new sweetheart. Why don't you speak into the mic, bitch? Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> what will he do the after fuck this? Was I just saying, like five seconds. Something ago. about like cooking meth and going to college. Oh yeah, okay. They sent me like thirty five hundred dollars to to live off while I went to college. Yeah. I I bought a laptop which I'm still using for everything. That was like maybe a thousand dollars. It was a good laptop at the time. Now it's five years old. Yeah. But uh, I went to we we around that time a new like. A retro game store had just opened in Lapeer. And we were like, man, let's check out this cool game store. I go in there with my fucking federal grant college money. And I buy an NES. And every <laughs> single fucking game, I spent $1,000 on wow. NES. Wow. That I played for maybe a week. And now they're on my shelf forever. Wow. And not even good NES games. Not even the classics. Like, not not, not Metroid or, or Mario 3 or anything. Like Tecmo Super Bowl. I bought Tec- fucking like like Wall Street Kid. Oh. And fucking Spelunker. Oh. Nobody fucking knows Spelunker. I'm no. the only motherfucker in the world who owns a copy of Spelunker. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Government sponsored game addiction. There we go. Oh, Jesus Christ. The things I've done and seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, you Spelunker. Yeah, I think the worst game I have on my shelf right now is pff, Roger Rabbit. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Actually, no, that's not true at all. It'd be uh, this like four and one like shitty Olympic game kind of thing. It's this tennis game where it's basically impossible to serve. Like you'll you can basically just like the first time you try to play it, you'll just miss the ball every time you try to serve, and the game will be over. That's basically, how it happens. Yeah. It's weird how like I can play sports games on old consoles, like but new sports games just annoy the fuck like. I think Madden is like like all gamers are supposed to. I think Madden is just shit. Like every year, I don't understand how people can be obsessed with sports so much that they'll buy it every year for a roster change. I just think it's bullshit. Yeah. But at the same time, I can put in Madden '95 on Genesis and play the shit out of that whenever I want, and it's still fun to me. Like I don't know why. It's just like that that weird retro nostalgic part of my brain. Like I yeah, just don't I, care. I feel like, the same way about a game called Stanley Cup Hockey for Super Nintendo. Like, it's, it's kind of a weird game because it's, like, first-person perspective and that, like, Mario Kart Mode 7 graphics. And um, whoever's holding the puck is always in the center of the screen. And it just somehow works where you don't really notice. That's how the game dynamic actually functions. And I can pick that game up pretty much any day of the week. I don't own it, but I can pick, up, pick it up pretty much any day of the week and play a game and kind of have fun with it. I remember there's, uh, there's, there's this trick where if, uh, if you press X to shoot, like a, like, a high shot right after you skate across the blue line... It'll go up and over and right behind the goalie's neck, and you can literally score every time. Like, we had 90 goal games, like, when we used to play against computers. And so me and my brother would be playing this shit, and um, we'd be like, okay, you, you can't do the secret move. You can't do the secret move. And, of course, you know, you'd be down a couple of goals, and you get pissed off. You'd start doing the secret move. And we'd start fighting with each other and beating each other up with this stupid fucking game. So, yeah, thanks, Stanley Cup Hockey, you pieces of shit, for not debugging it properly. Causing little kids to fight each other because of the, your stupid fucking X button behind the goalie's neck upshot. But those memories will be so precious when you're 86 and dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 86 and dead. That's the most precious time for memories. The most precious time. You know, the one really cool NES game that I have, uh, it's, it's Wolverine, the game. Mm. And uh, I actually ordered it on Amazon with the, with the box and everything. Because, like, Wolverine's my favorite superhero. What? I said, who's it about? <laughs> Oh, it's about a Silver Surfer. Okay, that sounds kind of gay. But, but no, like <laughs> Wolverine's my favorite superhero. Yeah. So I just, for some reason, I had to get this game because, like, holy shit, you made a fucking Wolverine game on the NES. I'm a fucking faggot. I don't need gas to go to school. Fuck it. I want. I need this. So I ordered that, and uh, it's by LGN, that shitty company who made all the bad games yes. that like AVGN always complains about. Yep. 
But even though it's like a really shitty game, I love it. Yeah. Just because like I love the box and just having it like on the shelf. Like the box, it's got Wolverine like in his '80s costume when he was like nice. wearing the brown. So beautiful, nice. wonderful, nice, magnificent. Did you ever play the Spider-Man game for Sega Genesis? Oh, the one where you can take pictures of yeah, shit. Yeah, you gotta take the, you gotta take the picture. Yeah, exactly. You gotta take a picture. Oh, that of, like, game kicks ass. To get, yeah, that game is so fucking hard, but that game is fucking. Yeah, great. I don't own it, but I remember renting it a lot when I was a kid and loving yep. the shit out of it. Yep. I used to babysit these kids back when I was like 15 years old. That's how I made like my spending and money to like buy like fireworks and fucking candy. Um, and they had this game, and like I mean, they're like they're like stupid kids, right? They don't know how to fucking play Sega. And I bust this thing out, and like all of a sudden, like I get past the first level because I remember playing it like years earlier um, at a friend's house, like, a little fucking sleepover party or something like that, where his older brother was playing it, so he knew how to play it. So we learned that he had to take like, a picture and shit like that. Because when you're a little kid, you have no fucking idea what you're supposed to do. You don't think to like check your menu or look through your items. You're just Spider-Man. You're jumping around. You can punch guys. You can shoot web. Sometimes you get a decent way through the stage, and maybe one of your friends gets the end boss, and then you got both get like fucking roasted. Um, yeah, but so we learned how to play this game, and so I'm playing with, like, these these kids like that I'm babysitting, and I'm getting past the first level, I'm getting past, like, the second level, I'm taking pictures and getting my web fluid, and, like, these kids were, like, blown away. I was, like, I was, like, the god of Sega to them. And it was, it was actually a pretty cool experience, like, like, when I think back on it, to be, like, to me, it was just, like, a normal thing, like, oh, yeah, I remember this Spider-Man game, but they're just, like, oh, my god, you got to the second level, but, you know, they're just, they're freaking out. And it reminded me a lot of when I, when I first, um, got Super Mario Brothers 3, which, by the way, my dad who was a pilot, uh, brought back from Japan on the little cartridge that you had to have an adapter for. And we were actually playing Super Mario Brothers 3 before Super Mario 2 was released in North America. So take that, everyone who didn't have a privileged <laughs> upbringing. Compare your, compare, compare your life to mine and kill yourselves. Um, but in any case, um, it reminds me of the time that I was actually playing Super Mario 3 at my babysitter's house because they were friends of the family, and her older brother got to World 2. Now, Back then, I thought Mario 3, I thought that when you got to the end of the castle on the first world, that was it. I thought that was the game. And that's just what I assumed it was, and that was fine for me, because we couldn't get to the end of the castle yet. And they did, and they beat it, and all of a sudden they got to this whole new world where there's all these new levels, and it blew my fucking mind. I'm like, this is the biggest game ever! Like, look, it's like it's like two games in one! And then, eventually, you learn, bit by bit, that there's eight worlds. Yeah, Mario 3, that was fucking groundbreaking. Yeah. That's <laughs> story worthy. Oh yeah. Is that wine? Mhm. <sighs> it, uh, it is uh. I can't believe you're drinking during the podcast. Yellowtail Chardonnay it... from Australia. <laughs> you're drinking Australian wine. Yeah, there's a picture of a kangaroo Where... on it. Did you buy that on purpose, or did you, did you just find it in the house? I, I bought it because it was the only wine that was five dollars, and that was. <laughs> <laughs> well. I've been there once or twice myself. Get out of fashion, Australian <laughs> Chardonnay. There used to be this sherry that you could get around here, or like back back in BC, that was like, I think it was like about four dollars and like twenty cents or thirty cents, um, and it was like seven percent or like eight percent. It was really strong, but like after one small bottle of this thing, you'd be you'd be feeling pretty fucking buzzed, and um, it was horrid. It tasted like cough syrup, but I drank it a couple times because I was a stupid idiot kid. I was desperate. Didn't realize that drinking. Decent booze is better than actually you know, no, drinking any booze is better than drinking no booze. So it really is like like a trial that you have to go through every time. Because for me personally, I know you love your beer, man. But like for me personally, I love being drunk is the only time that I have even an, an inkling of like childlike happiness and jubilation oh, man. in my life at all. I try mushrooms. <laughs> Shit. If you think that's the only time you have like a childlike inkling. Where you go back to that stage where everything is wonderful and beautiful and new, like like you're like a little kid literally at a toy store. Holy shit, man! Fucking mushrooms. I don't even care if I'm saying this on the podcast. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not admitting that I'm doing. I'm, I've done them, despite the fact that they're not technically illegal where I live, but in, in certain forms, anyways. But um, yeah, man. You want to talk about childhood glee? Holy fuck. Well, dude, I'll I'll come I'll come over to Calgary sometime. We'll 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 do some mushrooms and like cool kid drugs that like all the all the young hip hip people are doing and we, and we'll pay some strippers to have sex with us and we'll hit the nude <laughs> beaches and we will have ourselves I, a gay old time. I just say that we we go into the forest by ourselves where we're not bothering anybody and we find these things that grow naturally on the ground which are completely legal as long as that's how you find them and we we consume some and we had that experience which is oh, I, I I love me some forest. Illegal. I will go into the forest with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> for better or for worse. 
for better or for like, worse. Dude, I love the fucking forest so much. Like, yeah. I go camping, like, once a year with, like, my friends, like, in the summer. So good. And, and we go to the, and, like, the last two years we've gone to this place called, like, Nordhaus, where it's, like, like yeah. these amazing sand dunes and this amazing crystal clear beach and these amazing woods. I could fucking live out there, man. Like, I love animals and shit. I used to have, like, a, like, my old house that I used to live in had, like, a yard, and there was a fox stand in my backyard, and I would look at that fucking Ooh. fox, like, every day. Nice. Fucking foxes are so cool. Yeah, they, man. They're like cat dogs. Dude, there are they're cat dogs yeah. and they're fucking <laughs> and they're fucking they're they're like they're like how like how like redheaded women are like objectively the most beautiful women. Yeah, like they are. Foxes are like the redheaded women of animals. <laughs> you, just, you got a fucking redhead heart on for foxes. I do. They're I beautiful. Even it. though they even though they make the most ungodly fucking noise on the planet. I've, like I've never heard a fox noise before. I, I just assumed they barked like a dog. I just always assume foxes. Just... Oh my god! <laughs> when the podcast is over, I'll send you a video of like a fox like screeching. They make they make different noises. Send me the video like... right now. Send me the video right now. I'll load it up in our stream here, and everyone can see it if they're still watching this podcast. It's like one of my favorite videos. It's just like a fox just like staring like point blank like dead center at the camera, and like making this sound like. No! Jeez, that's a fox noise, eh? I'm kind of drunk. I'm like I'm trying to type in fox, and for some reason I typed in centaur. <laughs> That's. I don't think there's any of the same letters in there. So, Fox Screech. You're fired, you're fired from episode one of our podcast. Fox Screech. Um, here it is: the scream of the red fox. Eleven yep. seconds. Link it up. <laughs> Post it in Skype. Come on. I am sending this to you, buddy. It's taking so long. There. Okay. There we send. go. All right. Let's see here. Whoa. Jesus. Hold on. I replay this. What the fuck? It's see, it's like a cat dog. That's like that's like the combination of a bark and a meow. Ah! Oh my yeah, god. I I don't know if it's dog. legal to have like a fennec fox. I I mean I know it's legal to have a fennec fox. I'm twisting my shit. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's legal to have a, a a red fox, but I want one. But I know one of my buddies had a couple fennec foxes a while ago. Yeah. Like he lived on like this cool ass farm. He had all kinds of cool animals. He had like he had fucking wallabies and like fennec foxes what? and so shit. Like, dude, if I could have like a, a fennec wallaby from, do you get that off the internet? I don't know. I don't even know if it's legal. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but they don't. They don't <laughs> have it anymore, so I can say it. So fuck I it. I couldn't see it being too illegal to own a wallaby. It's not like you're owning like a poisonous snake or like some. Yeah, when I was in high school, my buddy, he uh, his mom, his mom owns a, a sheep farm. Yeah. And and she's um, I guess eccentric in her in her taste of like what kind of pets she likes. She fucked and she. And it's totally cool. I mean, like, she had, like, they had wallabies. They had a fucking kangaroo for a, for a little while. What? They had... Get a kangaroo. They, I, like, I'm, I swear to God, I'm not making this up. They had, like, a, a, a baby Joey kangaroo. And it would, like, it, 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 um, it would sit in this, in this, like, purse pouch that hung from, like, the doorknob. What? It was so fucking cool. And, like, that was, and that was my high school. Like, I, we partied there, like, all the time. That's crazy. Like some of the best times of my life are in that fucking like animal menagerie fucking house. Wow. Yeah, they had a fucking kangaroo. The it fuck died. It got man. sick, and a lot of the wallabies like couldn't survive the winter. I don't know. It was like a... <laughs> I know a lot of the animals died, but a lot of the animals died, but they're they're good people. They took care of these animals the best they could, but they died because they were in the, yeah. the wrong habitat. They had a fucking serval that like lived in the like a serval is like basically like a fucking a, a fucking forest cat that'll eat you. It's like as big as like a. Never uh, one of those. It was as big as like a husky. Jesus. And uh, yeah, and and she and she'd throw it like, we'd have to get like like Little chicken kids like, and, like hobos and like, shit like packets of chicken legs and we'd throw that shit and it just raw meat. I'll eat you <laughs> motherfuckers if I get out of this cage. And like he stayed in the basement for a little while and then we moved it outside into like into like this big aviary. Oh man, and we had peacocks and shit, but eventually, everything died and and she sold most of the sheep. Wow. And, uh, cause the fucking, we all, cause we all were like working on the farm and like taking care of the animals. Yeah. And then we got out of high school and we went kind of like, we went with our own lives and we couldn't like have that job anymore. So yeah. she had, she got rid of a lot of the animals and now it's just, I see. You know. but man, it was cool. Like oh, there's fucking like graveyard there, broken dreams and animal skeletons. <laughs> How the fuck did I start talking about wallabies first, in the first place? Oh yeah. yeah, because I'm drinking fucking Yellowtail Chardonnay. Oh right. That's right. That's exactly right. Hey, little boy, you want to come play some Barbie? Want to come diddle my... Bo- okay, I have, this, 
Okay, I have this weird ass fucking like, it's like an inside joke, but it's not with anybody. It's just an inside joke with myself. It's a fantasy. <laughs> it's, a fantasy. <laughs> it's like it's like this character that I have in my head, and it's just like just like purely like my own like insanity, like a voice in my head yeah. of like, of this of this, like bald like. Okay, you remember you remember Kano in the first Mortal Kombat movie? Yeah. He was like this really badass Australian guy, like. I said, you, you want to come 69 my dick? You Fuck it. Just fuck it. <laughs> yes. It, pretty much, okay, I remember pretty that much, exact scene. <laughs> pretty, much, pretty much this guy. Voice exactly like Kano. It's how I hear him in my head. And he's just like bald, like this like mercenary Australian outback kind of guy who just like he's got like, like a, a kangaroo skin vest and no pants and like an alligator tooth <laughs> necklace. And his just balls, his balls are just dangling, and he and he's and he's and like the way I picture him in my head, he's got like below the shores. He's got one tooth missing in the front, so it's, he looks kind of backwards. Yeah. He, and the way I picture him, he's constantly got one leg like around his his thigh, cupping his balls from behind and sort of diddling himself. And and you walk into your house, and he's and he's standing there like in the dark by candlelight, and on the TV. He's already got it set it up. He's got um he's got Barbie supermodel for Sega Genesis set up. <laughs> and you walk into your house. This is just completely my own fucked up headcanon that I just made up for myself. Okay. And just I think about this. I think about this occasionally all the time. Like I'll just walk into my house one day and he'll be there standing. I'm waiting for the day. He's there and he's and he's diddling his balls and Barbie Supermodel is playing on Sega Genesis. And he just says to me, Hey there, little boy. Nice of you to join the party. You want to play some Barbie? Let's, <laughs> let's play us some Barbie. It's my favorite game. And one of these days, I'm going to incorporate it into a video if I can ever oh find the God. actor. If I can ever find the actor who played Kano to play the part in the video, I'm I'll sure he's looking this. for work. I'm sure he's looking for work. <laughs> it's just like one of my dreams that I look forward That's to. Beautiful. So. That's beautiful. You want to play some Barbie? <laughs> By the way, Barbie Supermodel for Genesis. I don't know if that's the exact title of the game because I'm, I'm fucking plastered and i can't fucking remember <laughs> the, bar- the barbie game for the super- i know the one you mean for the super genesis for the super genesis. genesis i love the super genesis um it's underrated you wouldn't think that a, a barbie game would be good good it's really good <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic i mean okay maybe it's not fantastic maybe i've, I've got the i've got the nostalgia blinders on from I when i was so a little bit when i was a young boy and, and Although, mama sat down to play for sega genesis uh that is no joke Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, I mean, wow. Somebody thing. else is calling me during the podcast. This is great. I need to. Uh, okay, well, we can fix this in post. It's not like we're streaming to like a thousand people right now. So, Fuck it, um, leave it. give me a second here. <laughs> this is a party cast. We leave shit in. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. Okay, while you're handling this, Wait. I'm gonna go to the pee real quick. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm back. Do you ever turn into a, like a jet plane when you're drunk? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> you sort of like, it's not you so put much your arms jet. out and sort of fly. Yeah, like that, but it's not so much a jet. It's more like, it's kind of like, the instead of jets, it's like these cylinders that kind of look like beer kegs, where it's like, there's just really hot fire inside that's like burning like coal, and I think garbage, and it's just like the combustion inside forces the gas out the back, so it's not technically a jet. It's more like, I, I guess, kind of like a, a short-fused bomb or something. That's what I feel like. Uh, yeah. A dirty bomb in my case, because huh. of the, all the farts. Yes. Okay, so anyways, we were talking about uh, Beauty and the Beast for Sega Genesis, and I know there's at least two Beauty and the Beast games, but I'm assuming you're talking about the best one, which is Bell's Quest. Where you yes, Bell's Bell. Quest, exactly. Yep. That's oh my god, that game. I could never get past the first level, because really? I, I distinctly Bell. remember, because I played these games when I was a really little kid, because I was, you know, single mother, two sisters, whole household of women my whole life, so I played the fucking Barbie games and the Disney games. Um... Wow. So I, I remember being stuck on the first on the very first level because like you get to this part where there's like a mud pit. You know what I'm talking about? Did you get kill to, yourself like... in the mud pit because that's what you wanted to do in real life? <laughs> Not yet. That wasn't until I was <laughs> fine. When I, I said I wanted to kill myself in the mud. Pit. But, like yeah, I, I would get to the mud pit and there's like you get to the mud pit and there's like like it, there's like an incline at the end of it and I couldn't figure out like I couldn't jump into it and I couldn't fucking get past this fucking like wall and I just I, my entire fucking life. I couldn't get past the first level of Barbie's fucking Bell's Quest. Bell's Quest. Unbelievable. Beauty and the Beast, Barbie's Quest. By Square Enix Incorporated. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I might be munching on a popcorn right now. It's okay, I'm okay. munching on a cock consistently at every moment. That was... So, I'm drinking two Borg right now. 
which is a God, fantastic people. beer. And um, earlier in the afternoon, I got to try Granville Island Lions Winter Ale. I was very disappointed because it tastes like chocolate. And chocolate beer is just... <sighs> oh, fuck chocolate. I know. You, know what, you know what? Fuck candy. You know, every Halloween, even when I was a kid, I hated candy. It's all just fucking... What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> Candy's okay, you know. Yeah, I mean, fucking. Okay. I mean, you know, I don't like, I don't like fucking, fucking okay, cock sucking okay. butterfingers and heath bars. About, about, about chocolate. Teeth. Next time you're watching TV, which I, I pray to God you just never do again, because nobody should ever watch TV. But next time, if you happen to be watching TV, pay attention to when a commercial about chocolate comes on. You okay, will, you know what? Hey, hold on, you will only ever see women enjoying the chocolate. All chocolate commercials are marketed exclusively to women, unless it's a candy bar. If it's something like Snickers, O. Henry, Baby Ruth, that kind of thing, that's that's like a gender-neutral product. But if it's like purely chocolate, it's always going to be advertised to women. And I don't quite understand why, but I know there's some reason for it. It's because women are stupid. And uh, <laughs> and because and because the advertising agencies know I, that if they tell women that they're biologically disposed to fucking love chocolate, if they tell women they love chocolate, the women will love chocolate, and they'll just become addicted to it because women can't think for themselves. I don't think it's like that. Is. I think it's like the reverse way around. <laughs> I think it's just that like I think that women probably enjoy chocolate more than men do, and this was gradually found out over time by like various companies and advertising agencies over the last like you know seventy years since we've had like modern media. And I think but you know why discovered it. Why? And, what? Women love chocolate is because uh, meat or, is men's chocolate. On, on, wait, what, what? What? I was going to say, we give them, it, chocolate makes them horny, and that's why we give them chocolate on Valentine's Day. Does it? Definitely. Not not with all of them, but some of them it definitely does. Huh. Yep. I always thought that just fucking them makes them horny, like raping them. They have to rape <laughs> them. <laughs> well, I'm not even continuing with that. <laughs> I thought I was about to say. Uh, <laughs> no, I... I, I, I Christ. <laughs> okay, you know what? Can right. I say something really fucking horrible? <laughs> Again? Um, I think I, I think I've said this before. Is it about the Mexicans this time? Okay, it, I, I've had this thought in my while. I've had this thought in my mind for a while. It's basically a comedy bit that I've never performed. So for all I know, it could be fucking <laughs> horrible. And if I ever did it, I'd get booed out of the building. All right. But like, uh, like I, I, I was walking one day, and I saw this woman. Just like gardening on like the other side of the road, she was wearing like short shorts. It was like summertime. Yep. She was just gardening, like bending over and like planting flowers and shit. Like playing with herself and getting. And like no, no, it's like it's like really nope. weird how like how like the mind like how like we have an animal part of our brains that like will never go away. Because like <laughs> I was, I just like saw her like out of the corner of my eye, eye gardening. Yeah. And I just thought to myself like, what if I just walked across the street and pulled those hot pants down and fucked her? What would happen? I'm and like, I swear to God, I was seriously contemplating it for about <laughs> one second. I was thinking, like, would I? Would she even be mad? If I would she even be mad? I mean, like, because, like, because, like, because, like, because, like, not, because, not in like a rapey way, just like in a hey, uh, I'm a male I'm and uh, and I'm yeah. fucking you now. Cause, <laughs> like, because, like, it's not like in like in like a human environment. She's gardening. It's like in a nature natural environment. I'm just a male animal, yeah, that's, that, and that's I just see a woman across like, the like, plains, and yeah, I'm just I'm wild animals. It would be perfectly appropriate to just like just be like walking down the street and like see somebody and just like walk up and just be like, try to fuck them. That's what yeah. animals do all the time. And some animals are like crazy fucking rapists, like the like the fucking duck. I was watching this video called like True Facts about the duck, and it's all talking about like how the duck has like this crazy exploding like corkscrew penis, like yeah, spirals I around, and then, like the duck vagina also like spirals around, but in the opposite direction, and it has all these nooks and crannies, so the duck's penis will get like stuck in it, because I guess ducks like chronically like rape each other, and then they just like fuck off, and so it's like evolutionary evolutionary biology has like evolved to the point where it's like like. Basically, basically, the female duck knows that like this, like it's not good to have like a like a duck that's just gonna run off. So she tries to avoid mating with these other ducks, but these ducks still want to mate with them. So it's like this crazy, like like hundred thousand year long development of like their opposing genitals, and yet they're like they still exist and they're still here. It's fucked up. Duck penis. Look it up. I wish my penis was a corkscrew. It can be. Just so I could return some of that pain back to the women in my life. <laughs> 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 So you could corkscrew penis them. <laughs> I don't know. They might actually like that. That might that might bring them back into your life. <laughs> that might be the new thing, the corkscrew penis. 
Ah, the corkscrew penis. I Brought tried. to you by the yeah. Goat Orgy 20, 30, 2012. <laughs> what was it? The, the, the Gander Farms? What was our sponsor again? I don't know. We made it up. It's not a real fast. <laughs> we did not make that up. I'm sorry to the people at Gander Farms Goat Fest. Um, we just were very drunk and we forget about things like this. But please come back to Calgary next year. Uh, please do not cut our funding. Really erotic. Yes, and please do not cut our funding. Otherwise, we'd just be two broke guys talking over Skype. Oh my god, that would be terrible. No reason. I would kill myself if that was the truth. I would rape a woman and then kill myself if that were true. Why would you do that? Why would you add that in there? Why would you Why would you have to add that first bit in there? Hey, look, I was raised Catholic, and we believe that suicide <laughs> is a mortal sin. So if I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to rape someone first. And then, then you, like, kill yourself to, like, avenge, like, the sin. So it's like you're, like, atoning for it or something. Yes. Now that's, now we're putting our heads together for the common that's, good. That's twice as worse. That, that's I shall it. cling to that. You should cling to that. Wow. So this is uh, officially the best <laughs> podcast I've ever been a part of. Um, <laughs> we'll probably have a little more structure in the future, I assume. Maybe. Fuck structure. Probably, fuck sure. We probably won't, yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I guess our original premise was to talk about like video games and like drinking. So I uh, got the structure has been ruptured. <laughs> I'm going to move on to the drinking part and talk a bit about what I did yesterday. It's pretty fucking cool. I got invited to Big Rock Oberfest, which is like Big Rock Brewery's like private little fucking party that for like their employees and a bunch of their like fucking hobnobby people and whatnot. And that was awesome. That's one of the coolest things I've ever been to. Um, holy fucking shit. That was great because I got to try beer that will only exist in that one single cask. Made by this, like, brewmaster who I've met and talked to a few times, who's, like, the master of this fucking brewery. And we had some like, crazy food, and there's, like, cool people there. And, um, yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. So, um, where was I fucking going with that? That oh, is, like, so, like, legitimately cool. Yeah, dude. That's that, like, like some dude, like, that some corporate dude with, like, a Donald Trump come over. I'm assuming some cool dude. I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not dumping on Donald Trump. I'm saying that. Yeah, I, don't cool. see, yeah. I mean, yeah. like he like invited you to like a because your beer review booze and he. So like, tell these fine people about yeah. your <laughs> website, <laughs> booze. No, yeah. it, was, it was it was it was really cool. It was really cool. I got I got a Stein. I got a T-shirt. Getting a Stein back home was a little bit difficult because I had my bike locked up next to the train station, and so I had to like hold this like Stein. As I was biking down the street, and I was really drunk, so like imagine somebody who was like a little <laughs> drunk and wobbly on their bike, visibly holding like this giant Oktoberfest beer stein. It's pretty obvious to anyone who saw what was going on. But um, the time there was like, yeah, like I said, excuse me, it was it was fucking fantastic. Um, and they seemed to like us, so that's cool. At one point, my my buddy Painkiller, um, he he'd only stay for like a little bit, um, because he had to get home, he had his kids and whatnot. But um, I stayed there uh, for a little bit with them. And at one point, like, we were just, like, at the start, we were in lineup to, like, get, like, a, a little bit of food that, like, brought worse and, like, sauerkraut and, you know, Oktoberfest shit. And um, and we're, like, looking at – we're trying to find the end of the line, right? And we think we find it. And we just kind of step in. And then um, our one contact um, – oh, my God. I can't remember her name now. Barb? I think it's Barb. Or is it Brenda? Bobby. Okay, hopefully she'll never hear this. She'll never hear this podcast. It'll be all right. But she steps in. She she steps. She's like, oh, oh, hold on, hold on. She's kind of like shaking her finger and like she's had a couple too, right? We're like, what, what? And like, I guess we were basically cutting in line in front of her and fucking brewmaster Paul, who <laughs> are like, like basically the two more most, most important people at Big Rock. And we're just like, zoop, yep, yeah, we're at the line here. <laughs> and uh, so that was like a little bit embarrassing. Like obviously they weren't like, you guys are cutting in line. They were just like, I mean. Everyone there was drunk and having a good time, but it was kind of it was kind of amusing to me because like I pretty much blamed it all on uh, PK. Like um, I just kind of like walked off, and he's like, "Oh man, I can't believe I just like accidentally cut in line in front of the fucking brewmaster." And I'm just like, "Yeah, so did I, but I'm not gonna. I'll just pretend that never happened. I'll just I'll say it on a podcast though for like hundreds of people to hear." So, yeah. Brewmaster sounds like such a cool title. Dude, I mean, that's like that's like Royal Order Water Buffalo shit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're the fucking brewmaster. He you don't take you don't take shit from the fucking lowly serfs. Yep, you don't. You're you're literally the master of brew. Like he's like okay, if if a brewery was like a kingdom, he would be the king. He's the one who decides what goes on in the kingdom. He's the one who brews the beard, engineers it all, and he's made some really really fucking cool stuff. It's great, beer man. Anyone who says they don't like beer, and I heard this yesterday 
when I was standing in line for this fucking food at this place, I heard somebody say this, and I said this for a while. I heard somebody say, like, if you don't like beer, if somebody doesn't like beer, it's because they just haven't tried enough beers. And I think that's completely true. Because I didn't even like beer that much for quite a while. I was more of a whiskey man. And then it turns out that beer is actually really good. Well, well, I, I'm going to be honest. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to poo-poo in the punch bowl right now and ran in the parade. I don't really like beer. You, you, you could. You could like beer. Well, here's the thing about beer. Like, it occurs to me that, like... It isn't a bit of an acquired taste, I think. It's an acquired taste. Like, nobody likes it at first, oh. but they're just sort of peer pressured into liking it. I think that's how it is, too. And I think that, actually, I think as you get older, your tastes change. Like, your physical taste buds change. Because, like, when okay, for example, when I was a kid, tomatoes were the most disgusting thing on the planet. Like, the, the idea of eating a raw tomato was horrid like it was so horrid like even even one of my best childhood friends like nothing was more disgusting to us than like the idea of eating raw tomato this i one, love tomatoes but he, they give me herpes he, 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 okay this one time he <laughs> fucked up and like, his, his dad said like um you can choose your own punishment and so like an idiot he chose like one of the worst things he could think of and it was like eating like a whole tomato like raw and so that well that was his punishment and he did it and it was he told me about it, it was just like, the nastiest thing but in any case years later it turns out i just love tomatoes now I love them. I love raw tomatoes. I will eat just a slice. Well, I can see that because, like, if, if there is such a thing as an acquired taste, like something that you get used to, tomatoes are something that they'll that they'll they'll make you enjoy subliminally by putting them on your hamburgers for years and years. Subliminally until, until you just get used to them, and then suddenly you're able to eat a whole tomato. <laughs> it's a no, conspiracy I... to get us to love tomatoes, and it worked because I love tomatoes. I, I think the reason that I started liking tomatoes and like a few other things is that like. I got older where it's like I have to buy my own food, and sometimes I wouldn't have that much money, and I get like really hungry. So if like I had a tomato in my fridge, it was like a giant juicy steak to me, and it was like, oh my god, this tomato is so good. And you kind of like learn to actually like healthy food and like good food just because you have it, and you like you're like thankful that you are not dying in Africa of AIDS or some shit like that. Yeah, tomatoes and potatoes. What? Potatoes. I just threw myself for a loop there. No, you didn't. You know, the thing is about... What? <laughs> I don't know, man. Don't know. It's just like... It's so unfortunate that alcohol has to be so awful. I mean, like... As I said er earlier... You mean the only time that I'm happy is when I'm drunk. But it's like... Getting there is such a chore. Because I hate the taste of alcohol so much. That's so terrible. You just you have to find something that you like enough. And you'll just, like, grow into it. Your body will just get adjusted to it. It'll accept this... Taste. That's why. That's why for me, like I feel like. Is that why you like peppermint schnapps and shit? Yeah, that's why I drink girly drinks because. Oh God. Like anything fruity. Like no, no. Here's the thing, I think it's very manly and very tough to just go to the bar and be like, yeah, fuck it, I want something fruity and colorful. Fuck it, with an umbrella in it, you faggot, give it to me now, and don't give me no shit. I think that's. I think that's manly. <laughs> the <thing> is, <laughs> I guess if, if 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 your definition of manly is being like confident enough, where you're just gonna get whatever the fuck you want, then yeah, yeah I mean like I agree with you. Cause like, oh fuck, I was so gonna say something, and then I, I'm never the butterflies in a net, they fly away. I'll never call a, cosmo a cosmopolitan a manly drink, cause it isn't. However, if you if you walked into a bar and you just didn't give a shit, and you're like, give me a fucking cosmo, and you drank it and you're confident with it, and like you weren't doing it for any other reason, just for the fact that like you just wanted to fucking drink one of them. Then sure, that's fucking manly. Of course it is. Why not? Yeah, like like the more fucking foo foo the better. Uh, <laughs> foo foo the better. <laughs> um, fucking yeah. The one the, thing. What was, what was the first time you ever got drunk? First time I ever. Okay. First time you this ever is, got like buzzed or. This is a good story. Okay. Okay. Um, and I think I've told you the story before, but it was like a year ago. When Probably. we did like our when yeah. we did our first ever broken down geeks podcast, oh I told this story. Yep. So like it was a while ago. Um, first time I ever got drunk. Um, it was like a week before my twenty first birthday, so I almost made it. I was almost a responsible citizen. I was so close, but just that one more week. Yep. Um, yeah, because I was like super like anti fun in high school. I guess I mean I was a really grumpy motherfucker. I guess I still am, but I was really angry. I fucking hated everybody. I got in fights, like, every day. I was constantly, like, in school suspension and in the fucking... Because I just fucking... I hated fuck, I hated the fucking troublemaker kids and, like, the ones who would party and, and do drugs and smoke pot. You fucked and, your teacher, didn't you? And they'd... What? I said you fucked your teacher, didn't you? Well, I wish. Oh, my God. My fucking science teacher, Miss Rochelle, 
<laughs> Wait, did you say Miss Rochelle or did you say Mr. Shell? Miss Frischel, not Mr. Miss Frischel. Okay. Miss Frischel, if you're out there listening, uh, Jesse Wood wants to fuck you. My God, we had these pep assemblies and all the teachers would like do limbo and shit. Oh. Miss Frischel just fucking limbo like a motherfucking snake. Delicious. So fucking, I, if I could fucking. I bet you can see her camel toe poking out, but behind oh, yeah. those like tight uh, little. Uh, and she was garbage. like, she was, she was like such a bitch, and she would like condescend to the students and make fun of the kids, and that would just turn me on even more. That she's like so <laughs> quick, hated her job and didn't give a shit. <laughs> like this total dominatrix <laughs> fetish you have going on. <laughs> she, she, she would just like roll her eyes at the kids and be like, "Just what are you fucking retarded?" And like, <laughs> and like there were like these retarded kids who would get special treatment, and she would give them no special treatment. She didn't give oh. a shit. Wow. It's fucking, and she was like, she was young enough. I mean, like, she was probably like early forties or late thirties. She was young enough that she was like an eighties kid, yeah. and she was like really into like like Judas Priest and shit. Yeah. And just like picturing uh, her like at home in her pajamas and like and like a Judas Priest T-shirt dude, with like I, the neck cut off and like her shoulders showing. I I'm bet like, you a gym teacher who listens to <laughs> Judas Priest and is like in their like mid to late thirties is like a fucking animal in the sack. I bet oh, I, I bet know. she had like fucking crazy energy. Like if you're teaching gym, like that's your job is to teach a bunch of fucking idiot kids gym and deal with it. Like you obviously have a lot of energy to begin with. Damn. Yeah. Well, oh, well, yeah. I was talking about the first time. Sorry, I just I want to fuck your teacher now. So. Yeah, I got this. I got this. I got sidetracked by how much I want to fuck my fucking yeah, yeah. High school science teacher. But she uh, still the finger cuffs. No. You know. I actually, I actually, uh, I had a dream about her once, and I woke up coming, and. <laughs> I should hope so. I went to school, and I'm like, hey, everybody. You went to school coming. I went to school, and I'm like, yo, guys, I totally had a fucking sex dream about Miss Rochelle last night. And they were like, you told all your friends. They were all like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" But I, I've never been, more, I've never been more proud. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I remember, I remember having a sex dream about one of my childhood friends' mom once. That was like pretty <laughs> detailed. <coughs> she was a pretty hot mom. I, mean, I obviously can't say who it is, but um, yeah, that was uh, that was a really good dream. That's what I can actually still remember to this day. But I can never tell it because it was a little bit weird. Because it was back when I was like. I was pretty young, and I didn't quite know how everything worked yet, so my subconscious didn't really put things together properly. So, yeah, that one turned out a little bit weird, but I, I remember really enjoying it. So, my friend's mom, if you're listening to this, I still want to fuck you. <laughs> Miss Rochelle, if you're listening to this, yeah. you know where to find me. That's right. Um. But anyways, <laughs> it's like the most roundabout fucking story. <clears throat> Oh God! This podcast I'm so exactly hard. I've given myself it. AIDS. I know. <coughs> I can hear it. The well, raspiness is the AIDS coming out. <laughs> okay, so it's back in back in high school. You know, me and my friend back in high school. You know exactly where you stand. You get into in, in your cliques and your small groups with your friends, and, and we were the straight edge kids. You know, we were fucking fuck those druggy cunts and faggots and losers. We we fucking play video games and we're totally cool just being us. We don't need fucking alcohol to have a good time, you know. And that's who we were. Like all through high school, we were that group and we were awesome and we were badass. But then high school ended and you know everybody fucking goes their separate ways and goes to different yep. schools and things fucking change and suddenly you don't know where you stand anymore and everything becomes fucking confusing and you're just in the real world and you're alone for the first time because you don't have your little high school cliques anymore. Yeah. And it's weird and 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 so. So, so by the time, you know, it's summer again, and we're all together again, and we're all partying, you know, I was like, I was 20, I, it was just before my 21st birthday, and we're all partying and stuff, and, and so now we've all been away for sort of a year, and, yep. and, and everybody's a fucking, I, I come back to my friends, and they're all fucking alcoholics and shit, not alcoholics, but, but everyone's fucking drinking, yeah. and I'm like, oh, okay, I guess we drink now. And I yeah. was, I was and, and I was the last one to be able to accept it and get on the bandwagon because I was so, because I was the guy who defended the group. Like that was like my role in the group in high school. Like I was the motherfucker who was abrasive, and if anyone fucked the group, I was the I was the guy who'd start throwing fists and getting in people's faces, and getting myself in trouble for the good of our little clique. You know? Yeah. Like that was my role. I was the I was vitriolic. I hated I hated the motherfucking <laughs> the drunk kids and the partier kids. But so I was the last one who would, who was able to accept the drinking thing, but it's it's like a week before my twenty first birthday, and everybody and we're having like a party and a get together and everyone's drinking. So I'm just like, God damn it, just fuck it. And I drink, and I get so fucking drunk. And and there's this girl, 
who's Uh-oh. part of my click who's part of my click of friends. She's she's uh she's my oh. buddy's she's my buddy's girlfriend. But they've been going through like shit. They're oh, pretty much okay. breaking up. And 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 I didn't know this at the time, but she was totally already rebounding with my other friend, and that was gonna be a whole other thing. I'm not oh. saying names, because if I did I'd be a terrible person. This is our business personally. Yes. And I wouldn't even be saying any of this if I wasn't fucking hammered right now. You're drinking tonight? Dude, I'm fucking oh, Australian God. fucking outback. Hold on, I got I have some beer around here somewhere. But uh yes, anyways. Cool. I didn't real I didn't even fucking realize that she was already fucking just about in love with my other buddy. Fuck, if they ever hear this podcast, they'll be so pissed off at me. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to send it to them in about 10 minutes, so. But, uh, if, if, like, yeah, I was so fucking drunk that, uh, I decided right then and there, that night, that fuck it, I'm going to shoehorn myself into this fucking bullshit. <laughs> I was so fucking drunk that I, that I, like, I, it was the first night I've ever been drunk, and I don't think I've been that drunk since. Really? I was fucking insane. And I'm like, God damn it, if if this if this ship is sinking, I'm gonna set off some motherfucking C4 and make it go down faster. Oh god. <laughs> so I was so fucking drunk. And I fucking I just remember I decided. I I literally made the decision to fall in love with her. And I was <laughs> I was so fucking drunk, it worked and it stuck. And to this day I have feelings just from deciding it. That's how fucking in another fucking world I was. How do you just how do you just decide that? How do you decide something like that? Dude, I did. I'm like like to me, like it seemed like completely logical at the time. And like over the next couple weeks, like I stood on it and I and I and I dwelled on it until it until it slowly became real, you know? Wow. Like I wanted so bad to just be a fucking nuisance, I guess, <laughs> that it became real for me. Jeez. And and I ended up legitimately making myself like making myself fall in love with this girl and it was fucking something that ended up torturing me for a long ass fucking time and i still have residual fucking like inklings of of feelings for her that i that i can never get rid of i guess wow you're that's just how fucking, for life that's how fucking nuts i was that night like and i fucking just came up for and this is out of fucking nowhere i you know for the longest time this girl's been my my guy's my my guy's girlfriend you know We've never, like, had, like, a fucking friend relationship really at all besides, you know, the fucking tangential. It's not a word. Tang- tangential. <laughs> Tangible? Yeah. I mean, like, we've never had, like, a close relationship at that point at all besides her being my buddy's girlfriend. There was fucking no reason for this to fucking happen at all. <laughs> but I just fucking decided that I was in love with this girl. And I fucking walk up to her in a state of drunkenness. Not yet uh-huh. rifled by man. <laughs> I fucking... I grab her, and I fall to my knees. <laughs> no. And it's, and we're on a farm, so it's like I'm in a compost pile. So I'm literally falling down... Why are down. we at a farm? Because it's my buddy's farm that he lived in with the animals, right? Uh-huh. And, and we're in a compost pile in the backyard. It's like near us. So I'm in my knees in shit. Literally falling <laughs> over myself, rolling around in shit, crying, saying, I fucking love you. I've had these feelings all my oh, life, so even sad. though I fabricated themselves for myself. So sad. This moment just now, somehow, in my insane drunken state, to me, has been all my life. And, uh... And what did and you that learn? Was the first... <laughs> 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 oh, I learned nothing. <laughs> really? Nothing? And that's, you didn't and learn that's, anything? And, and that's my first night drunk. And wow. that is how, long story short, that is how I set up a domino chain of events that uh pretty much ruined that my life today. and led me to the <laughs> yep. a horrible drunken uncle I am today I and destroyed any them. chance I ever had of happiness. Happiness or contentment or love or acceptance. That's what eventually disintegrated my relationship. Yeah. Turned me into this fucking creature that Basically, you see before you, you today. You took the stair path down into the underworld and now you're there. It looks the same as the rest of the world, but the, the real hell is that only you know the suffering. Yeah, it's like it's like if if like if there was like a staircase, like a spiral staircase that went on infinity to the bottom of the earth and beyond, and no one could ever reach the bottom. You just walk on it for infinity, right? Yep. And eventually you starve on that staircase because there's just no bottom to it. But there's a sign at the front saying, "You do you think you get the balls to get to the bottom?" 
and you're fucking sit there in your hubris <laughs> and, and, and you th- and, and you say, yeah, I can make it. I can get to the bottom of the bottom of the staircase. <laughs> Fuck you. I'll do it. Yeah. And you, fucking, no and you fucking go with no supplies and no food and you just fucking go on that endless staircase. You know what the worst punishment would be is that like after you eventually die because like I mean you're gonna get down all the way so much far into the staircase you're eventually just gonna die because you can't make it back up. Um, but after you die, the worst punishment would be if you have to just like relive that again and again. Like you have to watch yourself from different perspectives for this like like days, maybe even weeks long process of descending into the staircase and then just slowly withering away and dying. Oh god, it's like the worst. And you know what? There's another part of the story that I'm forgetting because I remember a night before that night. Because I had stayed the night at my friend's house the night before, right? Yeah. And uh, me and that girl, we had found ourselves upstairs eating fucking microwave tilapia from earlier that day. Oh, I remember dude. this so vividly. Dude. It was microwave tilapia leftovers from the fridge. And for some reason, it ended up being me and her late at night at the table eating this fish. And she was complaining about all the trouble she was having with her boyfriend because he was like my buddy at the time. Oh, man. And 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 I had never thought of her as like really a friend before then, you know, not really a real friend, more of like a friend's girlfriend. And that was the first night that she like confided in confided in me, and like we were like and we were like actually having a conversation. Yep. And and then, and, and then you started liking her. And that's. And then not, everything went yeah, to hell. And that's yep. like and like not even liking Don't her. Do that it planted anymore. the seed. It planted the seed, and the next uh. day I just got drunk enough for the very first time I was drunk, to just fucking go completely ape shit. And be oh, like, you know what? Oh, I'm gonna fucking nurture the seed all at once and just fuck it. Oh fuck man, it. man, and when you water, if when you dump like an entire bucket of water on a seed, it doesn't sprout; it just dies. It just fucking. That is cramped. such a perfect, beautiful analogy yes, that we came up with together in tandem, and yes. I'm so proud of us for that. <laughs> we're like, we're like, we're like <laughs> drunk Shakespeare right? what we just... This, this, this is what I've been saying for a while actually, because you can compare a lot of different as as pests. You can you can be really drunk and trying to do a podcast sometime and trying to talk and then maybe say something retarded. Uh, you can you can compare a lot of different aspects of human nature to actual nature, so like plants and like seeds and the way the life cycle grows and and develops. Like there's like it seems like we're really different. Like you'd think a human being is very different from a plant, and of course it is, but in some ways it's not at all. And like all these kind of processes of life are kind of connected and, to rela- and related to each other in some yeah. very complexity or another. And it's weird how like a spider web between them all. Like, can connect and like so many different like can phalanges <laughs> can come Phalan- out of like Yes, one. I know what you mean, yes. Because it's like I think back to that night to this day I think back to that one specific night constantly mm. and because it's like that night and like my actions that night it's, it's like a really weird thing to think about but it's like that was like a changing of the guard in my life because like every part of where i am today and who i am today is like is like a, a reverberation from that one fucking stone in the pond of that night oh damn like it changed this everything because i mean I like that that's like it's like i think about that night all the time like in wow. my lonely in my lonely hours laying alone in my bed at night at like 4 a.m huh it's like amazing when i because like Cause I don't know, like it, it messed up like the relationship that I was in, yeah, and and it like put me into this like weird fucking funk of depression for like four yeah. years that I've still yeah. not completely recovered in. Yeah, I know and, exactly uh, what you're talking about, man. And it's just like, and like, because of all the events that happened after that, I mean, I lost friends, I everything changed, and like, and and the weird thing is, me and that girl. It's so weird. Like to this day, I have such a weird relationship with her that I don't know how to, how to, how to describe. Because like we became uh, like better friends since that day. Right. Like. But you still like her. It's not even that. Yeah. It's like a it's like bit. she's you do a little bit, yeah. Maybe well, yeah, not... yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously. So of that course, compl- but yeah, like... that complicates things. That's yeah. It's like we became better and closer friends because of that day than we probably ever would have, anyways. Mm. And I feel like, I feel like now, like, it's like three years later, I feel like she loves me and she understands me more because of that day, but it's like, she's wary around me. Because, like, ever since that day, like, it put me in such a funk. Like, I get, I think I see what you're saying. Like, I, like, for the last three years, like, every, like, I, I, I'd be doing good, 
or I'd be getting better and then I'd crash again. Like, pretty much depending on whether or not I was getting late at the time. Yeah. And it's like, every time I crashed, I would, like, make her the focal point of it to her great annoyance, I'm sure. And it's like, it seems like we'd become great friends and we'd connect and we'd come to an understanding together and that'd be great. And, and it, I'd be like, okay, this is okay. This is good. We're we're friends. Everything's fine. We've come to an understanding and, a, and like, a good point. Yeah. And then, like, some shit would go wrong in my life. And, like, it seems like every six months I'd, I'd crash and I'd get drunk and I'd and I'd do something fucking stupid and embarrass myself in front of her again and set everything back to zero and make her like wary and distrustful of me again. And it's like it's and then I'd slowly build up her trust again and we'd become friends again. It's like a pattern that's been repeating for like three years. And it's like such a weird relationship I have with her. Yeah, sounds like it. And I hope I can come to like a concrete place with it and stop fucking it up at some point. Why? Because at this point it's not even like a What do you get out of it? Well, because she's my friend and I love her. And, right. and I love my what friends. She give you? She's my friend. She doesn't have to give me anything. No, but I mean, like, fr- friends give you things. Like, that's, that's the whole premise of friendship. Like, I like you're my friend, and, like, I find you funny. I enjoy talking to you. We have similar interests. We can we can have the same kind of sort of commentary if we see a movie or TV show, and we can kind of talk about it in a similar fashion. So that's what I get out of it. Well, it's like... I don't know. I, I guess I've always been the kind of person... This is like, if she didn't have tits and a vagina, would you still be her friend? Probably. I mean, not probably. As, I wouldn't, I wouldn't you give didn't as much. Say shit instantly, about. yes. Well, of course not. I don't give a shit about <laughs> anyone who doesn't have tits and a vagina. I mean, I'm, sli- I I'm slightly fucking with you. I know this is turning into I the apologize. fucking. This is turning into the bits and booze fucking therapy cast. <laughs> but um, <laughs> <laughs> the bits and booze therapy cast. Right. You know, I mean, you know that you know that I'm a I'm a pretty super open heart on my sleeve kind of guy. I have no problem yeah. fucking spilling my guts about anything. Yeah. I just don't fucking give a shit. Yeah. Um, and I do this to her too. I <laughs> I bother her her whenever I see her about all my shit that I'm going through. But I like to think that I'm there for her when she needs me too, which isn't quite as often, but it is occasionally. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm the kind of guy who like. I guess I I really love my friends, even to like even to a fault. Like I put a lot of importance. Yeah. On my friends because I've lost them, and there's been times in my life when I had no friends, and I never want to go back to that. And that's just kind of, it's just kind of, that's really like the crux of who I am. Like everything about me is about my friends yeah, see, and I know belonging to like the, that my... Because it's easy to recognize for me because I've, I've been like that. And there's like this secret. There's like this, there's like the secret of life that you never would expect. And you, you don't really understand when you first hear it. But the secret is, is that you always have to like consider yourself first. And I don't mean in a selfish way. I don't mean like be a selfish prick. I mean that like if, it, it, unless you learn to like treat yourself properly, like respect yourself and actually like come to like enjoy who you are and actually like and love who you are, like you can never you can never give to the people around you properly. You can never give in a way where you get back in a way that you feel fulfilled. Like it starts yeah. with doing that to yourself first, and then everything else around you manifests in that way. Because I've talked to a bunch of people in my life where it's like, I, I don't think I could ever love, I, I, or I, I don't think anyone could ever love me as much as I love them. It's like, they, they feel like they're giving out so much more. Yeah. That's exactly how I feel about like everyone yeah. in my life. Yep. So take some of that, like a bunch of that energy that you're giving, giving out and that you're not getting back, give that to yourself. And I know that's yeah. a stupid, simplistic, retarded, easy, stupid way of saying it. Um, but at least, at least I've said it, you know, and at least maybe you'll think about that later. Cause it is, that's, that's a very important part of living on. Planet. Yeah. And I mean, like there are times when like, it really gets to me and like, it really gets me down and it's really depressing because like, ah, oh, God, I completely lost my train of thought. I had like good thoughts and and they just like, they're just butterflies in the net, man. But it's like, um, ah, <laughs> uh, fucking Christ. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> like, uh, I just don't make some philosophical crap on you. I know. Like, I'm in, like, a philosophical burrito now, and it's just, like, it's getting so hot that, like, the, the beans are starting to, like, blow up outside of the shell. Wow. That is hot. <laughs> uh, yeah, because, like, I know that, like, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm fucking annoying to my friends sometimes. Like, everybody's selfish, and I feel like that, like, as much as I love my friends, they disappoint me fucking constantly. And I'm sure I fucking disappoint them occasionally. Yeah. And it's, like, it's just, like... It's something that you just deal with when you're friends with someone because, you know, 
But like when you, you put everything you have into it, it gets you are who they yeah. are. Yeah. But it's like I've had such a oh god damn my thoughts are fucking retarded. <laughs> but I've had such a like, a weird relationship with this girl for so long. That, like, at this time, any time that we can just be friends and just talk and just have things be normal, it's 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 great to me. And, like, I wish I could, like, get to that state and stay there and fucking find it in myself to put that shit in concrete and keep it that way without me fucking something going wrong in my life and me crashing and me putting the fucking shit on her and driving her crazy, which in turn breaks my heart all over again. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a cycle yeah. that I'm trying to, saying. like, get myself out of. Because she's one of my best friends, and I love her, and I want to fucking, you know, be you know a, a better friend, I guess. I guess that's what everyone wants, is just be a better person to the ones they love and yeah. get that back from the ones yeah. they love. And it's just like a struggle that I guess everyone faces, and I'm just articulating it in a fucking drunk, stupid way. But I think people, in their in their souls, can understand what I'm saying. Of course. <laughs> but the thing is, like, okay, have you, have, you, have you stopped liking her? Like, I'm not saying, like, in a friend way, but, I mean, if you still have that little bit of shred there... It, then things are always going to be complicated and they're always going to be like a little bit shitty. Because well, it's, it's well, fucking difficult for a guy to be like legit friends with a girl and not oh, have yeah. that it's, little... It's incredibly difficult. And... Yeah. It's mostly it's... impossible. That's been my experience. Here, well, it's mostly here, impossible. Here's like, the it, thing about men and women being just extent, friends. But... The thing about men and women being just friends, people say it's impossible. It's not impossible, but it's a guarantee that one of them is going to be a little bit more miserable about it than the other. That's yeah, I think that's actually probably true. Yeah, and and, that's and, just, and, and, and I, you know what? I think anyone who says that isn't true, they're probably the one who's less miserable. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think that's how it works. I think that's how it works. Interesting. <laughs> I Interesting. rather like that that little conclusion that we've that we've come to there. I mean, Anybody? Makes, makes, we're smart. <laughs> we yeah. say smart things. We we say smart things. It takes us like an hour and thirty minutes to say something smart, but when it happens, there it is. There it is, man. It's just yep. like a uh, Jeff Goldblum fucking chaos theory. You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> myself, I mean. myself. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. But uh, yeah. Uh, b -b 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 I, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I mean, I can't. I can't say a whole lot because I don't know how good a friend you are with this person. But I mean, like, if 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 it's gonna be the kind of relationship where you're like you're you're st you're still hung up in like the, the this tiny shred of liking stage. And I would say the more interesting that thing that could happen would be for you to somehow leave this behind, because like clearly it's taking up a lot of your time and energy, and I'm I don't know enough to say that whether or not that's bad or unhealthy. But if it is, and you leave it behind, that like that's like a a massive amount of your time and energy like freed up to well, go you know to something else, and it'll go towards I've, something. You can't not. I'm at a point now. We're like. With her. And I can't believe I'm talking about her like so in depthly in like a public thing. But she's not you. gonna fucking hear it. None of my friends listen to my fucking shit anyways. Fuck them. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like with her, I've reached a sort of equilibrium because it's like I don't know how in depth I want to go with this, and it goes in like a lot of different directions. And I'm trying to like gather my thoughts, but it's like I'm at a point now where like for a long time it really bothered me and really drove me crazy, but like. Right. Uh, and, like, there's always going to be, like, an attraction there. And, like, there's always going to be times when I feel like, God damn it, why the fuck would you fuck anyone else? And why would you fucking tell me about it? You you, you, you know how I feel, bitch. But it's, like, yeah. at the same time, it's, like, because, like, I've had other girls. And this is the other girl that I talked about earlier. Yeah. It's the fucking girl who ruined Cowboy Bebop for me. Like, this, like, this was a girl who... I, I, I had feelings for forever. Yep. And and we stayed friends forever, even after high school. And the second, the very second that I made it seem even a little bit apparent, finally, I finally gathered up my courage to ask her out. Oh, no. And the second that I made it seem oh, no. like I wanted to be more than friends, even a little bit, she confirmed all my worst fears that I always oh. had and basically just fucking wrote me off and threw, our, and threw a decade-long friendship under the bus. Oh, my God. And that hurt me and still hurts me, and it still fucking pisses me off. Yeah. Wasn't anything in the fucking world, and it's been like a year, and I haven't talked to that girl since. Yeah. I mean, because like, how do you forgive someone for treating you yeah, that yeah. disrespectfully? So it's like, I think about that girl, and then I think about this other girl. I know it's fucking confusing when I won't name names, but just bear with me. Yeah. You know, it's like, I think about that girl who fucking, as soon as I insinuated anything about a, a normal friendship, she just fucking freaked out. 
And I think about this other girl who I've been, who my relationship has been so complicated for so long. And through it all, through all the times that she's driven me crazy and broken my heart, and through all the times that I've annoyed the fuck out of her, I'm sure, with my fucking faggoty I'm, I'm, in, I'm in love with you bullshit. Yeah. She's never not been a friend to me. And huh. she's she's never given up and she's never thrown the shit under the bus like other women have for lesser reasons. That's just and that to me, I suppose. That to me helps me be at an equilibrium with her now where it's like, no matter what, I know that in some level this girl loves me and cares about me as a friend. So I'm, it's, it doesn't hurt me okay. as much anymore, you know? Okay, yeah. So I respect her for that, for, for bearing with me all this time yeah. and, and still fucking being a human being to me. Yeah. Because I, I know that that goes against a woman's every natural impulse to act like a human <laughs> being towards a male. I, so to, I, I find, so that's I, a big thing. I find it interesting that you say human being and, and your definition of human being is basically something that's like purely, but <coughs> purely, <coughs> hold on. <coughs> I'm dying. I think I have like lung cancer and type two diabetes. Um, I was gonna say I find it interesting that you say human being as if if it's in the context of a human being being somebody who is benevolent and and logical and rational. Well, yeah, um, because I've, I've, I I've, I've... I like that definition. I don't think that fits pretty much any of us, but I think that's a good definition to aspire to. But I mean, I I don't think I I mean, well, you know what? Well, no, I, think I, I, like... I get I get what you're saying. I get what you're I saying. I think that I think that. I mean, maybe it's just, like, my life and my experiences, but I think that, like... Yeah, and you've got some I, shitty ones, so that's going to shape, like, your entire world, yeah. so, like... Kindness of, and empathy are the most important things in the fucking world, and... Yeah. Um, that's... I mean, and I've been I've been kicked Keep around before, that. Yeah. and I've been taken advantage of, I feel like, a lot in my life, and, and to me, the only way that I can describe it is that a lot of people just, and especially a lot of fucking women... Don't know how to treat other people like human fucking beings. So, do, do you want to know the secret of fixing the world? Like the ultimate secret of actually fucking fixing the entire world? And trying I, not to be you, a cunt. Oh, and I guarantee you that this is this is actually what would fix everything. Um, okay, when, when when somebody is shitty to us, our natural action, our natural reaction is to be shitty back. And even if we're good people, if somebody's shitty to us, we're, we maybe we'll we maybe won't react. We'll, we'll maybe think something shitty towards them. We won't say you know that kind of thing. Um, like the thing is, is that like we've we've been on this planet, our species has been on this planet for like thousands and thousands and thousands of years, and we're basically still kind of at this point where like we're still constantly shitty to each other, like where we have all these different factions and borders and different lines and governments and countries and languages, like and and between all of that, like a lot of us just treat each other really shitty because that's the natural thing to do. It takes absolutely no effort to just if somebody like like if I'm riding my bike. And somebody honks at me for whatever reason, it's my natural inclination to like give them a finger. It's like, what? You honked at me? Fuck you, you piece of shit. You know how we actually start fucking fixing this place once and for all? Is acknowledging, like being aware of the fact that when someone treats you shitty, you're going to react shitty. Start yeah, acknowledging well, that fact. Hold on. Start acknowledging that fact and being aware of it. And then when it comes up, choose to do the opposite. Like, like deny your natural inclinations because our natural, okay. Everything about humanity, all of our natural inclinations got us here, where we are right now, in this fucked, this absolutely fucked up place. Like, this, it, our, the, our world, could it be more fucked up? It gets more fucked up every day. Every time I turn on the fucking news or, like, I go on to Reddit or something like that, I see uh, some other story about how much more fucked up the world is getting. That's what our natural inclinations have yeah. gotten us. So you know what, what say, you're saying reminds me of? <laughs> hold on. I just, remind wait, just let me quickly right. finish this thought. <clears throat> Excuse me. I say I say that if if somebody treats you shitty, I'm not saying I'm not saying let's like you know be a, a, a doormat and let people walk over you, but I'm saying acknowledge that your natural inclination inclination is going to be to treat them shitty back, and do something differently. Either either don't treat them shitty back, or maybe even treat them well back. You know, it's it's the whole analogy I think I've talked about before of like the snowball, where if you have like a, a giant fucking shitty snowball and it rolls down the hill, it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, and the only way to stop its size and speeds is just remove the snow, and eventually it'll run out of steam, it'll stop gaining momentum, it won't grow anymore, and it'll slowly melt in, you know, weeks and months to come. So, that's that's my secret of how we can yeah. actually. Figure <clears throat> it out. You know what that philosophy reminds me of? It reminds me of that. That episode of Seinfeld where George says, I'm just going to do the opposite of my every natural instinct. Yes. And, it, and his life just becomes so <laughs> yes, much better for yes, it. Yes. That's just like that on a larger <laughs> scale. 
<laughs> oh my god, that's that's the perfect analogy. Yeah, where he 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 has this epiphany one day where it's like everything <laughs> he ever does is just wrong. So he just he just decides to do the exact opposite. So one way or another, the secret of humanity the always comes down to going up, like so. two in at once or something. Something I, I I don't remember. And yes. like I remember like Elaine did the opposite of everything she wanted, and her life turned out shitty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, that show's fucking brilliant. Which just goes to show that a woman's every natural instinct is fucking evil oh. and selfish and gets her ahead in life. Oh my god, oh, okay. Er- so when I- she does the opposite, she's acting like a human, which Every- is why I respect this person who's my friend so much, because she does the opposite of her natural womanly instincts and acts like a human being towards a man and treats me with respect. I would just like to request that any <laughs> woman out there listening right now, um, please leave an angry comment or send us an angry email. Um get upset about this because we're completely serious about this all the time and we we're trying to offend women on purpose that's when me and jesse first started this podcast <laughs> we started on skype for like a little bit and we talked about like a few different things that we want to do like obviously bits and booze party cast we want to talk about like video games and booze and whatnot but one of the other things that um we both kind of um hit on was the fact that we wanted to offend women with the podcast and like i think we've done it a little bit like i think we've I hope like like I hope a few women out there are listening and are truly offended, um, and I I think that we've probably hit the nail on the head with that. Um, we're gonna continue trying to offend women like in the next podcast. We'll probably do a better job. Um, we might mix in some racial minorities. Like we we just we want people to be angry after they hear this. So let us know if we're doing our job. Give us some feedback. I don't. I want everyone to love me unconditionally. <laughs> I don't know this guy. I like how you have to backpedal for my I'm seething, proud, oh, oh, furious I'm, hatred of the female species. I'm proud of myself. You have to justify it <laughs> to our audience. My all-consuming wrath. It started, it started women. some sort of justification, and then it became a game to myself where I'm like, I wonder how long I can actually like continue this for. Probably a while. <laughs> no, no, there's there's uh, there's no justification for it. I hate women. <laughs> no, you don't. I don't. If there's if there's if there's an attractive woman who liked you right in front of you right now, you would. Fuck Here's me. the thing. Um, I forget which philosopher said it or which writer said it, but I read a quote the other day that <laughs> made me smile like the fucking Grinch, like a smile oh, all the way up to my let's, eyes. Yes, yes. No, let's, <laughs> let's smile. All you have to say is the Grinch. What was the quote? And it's like, the quote was that, like, any man who doesn't hate women hasn't thought about women that hard. <laughs> and it's like, here's the thing. That's, that's... I'm going to say the fucking, I'm going to say exactly what I feel and exactly what I think. And the thing is, Anytime that a man says like this stuff, if a woman is listening and gets offended with it, what the what my suggestion would be to think that even if you're offended by it and if you don't believe it, the fact is that a man and men feel this way. Yeah, I get I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying because I think I think a lot of women will hear like a man complain about some sort of like womanly trait, and there are womanly traits because there are also masculine traits. Um, I think a lot of times they'll they'll hear something like that and just kind of take instant offense. But the, the the thing, the fact of the matter is, like, if a bunch of guys are talking about it, obviously it's something. It's not like it's not like guys get together and, and slam back beers and just like wildly fabricate stories about their interactions with women. I mean, yeah. sure, we do embellish sometimes. Obviously, everyone does. That's that's simply what we do. But um, yeah, it's, it's not like we're like getting together and being like like making up stories about like, oh yeah, this this girl from ahead. Oh, I had this horrible experience. Like nobody, yeah. nobody makes up stories like that, right? Like I'm at a point in my life where I pretty much believe and have realized that women are just evil, narcissistic, is, stupid, so, spoiled monsters. No, that is so, that is so untrue. <laughs> the I, thing I, is, not on the. I say that, I would say that about like a lot of humanity. And you know what? On, on the right day, I would say that. I mean, if I had a, if I had a bad experience on a date or something like that, I'm sure I'd be there right along with you, saying something like that. But you can never, you can't discount the female sex, no matter how fucking irritating they can be, and how really sometimes uninteresting a lot of them can be. I'm sorry, ladies, just it, it, us guys are the same. We're just fucking boring pieces of shit a lot of the time. But it's the whole okay. Our entire fucking world. I'm gonna wax philosophical here. Our entire world is based on this light and dark, and positive and negative, and yin and yang, and male and female. And you have to have those two things for like creative energy to occur. And so you should never like even if women treat you like shit sometimes or you have like bad experiences like that, like still appreciate the fact that you live in a world where you have this like a op, like opposing biological and spiritual gender because like that's how creation happens. Like not just like the fact that like we can come together and create another human being, which is pretty fucking crazy. Which... 
very few of us sit down to think about. I mean, I, I don't even sit down to think about that very much. But when I do, I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, I could take my dick and stick it in some chick's vagina, and suddenly, like, there is a new person. A new person exists. I did that. I made a new person, and now I'm responsible for this this new person. I can. Uh, it's it's like raising the ultimate pet. Like that's. I I don't have fucking kids. That's that's the best way I can approximate. It would be like it would be like raising the smartest pet in the entire. World. Like this pet turns into like a fucking person. It, like starts off as like the the little shitty Pokemon, and then like evolves as like fights more like little kindergartners, and it gets up like the high school level, and eventually like evolves in like the, its final form, which is like a fully like grown adult. I mean, like we we can fucking make that. But with at the same time, you can make all sorts of other stuff with that intermingling of like the two different fucking energies. Because like seriously, if, if there if there is no women out there at all to like impress or be friends or or anything like that, how, like how much less would you be doing with your life? Because me personally, I'd be doing a lot less. Like I would be. I mean, I don't think I'd probably do my hair up. I don't think I. Well- dress very nicely i think i like like shit because like who cares no guy is gonna fucking care what i look like so who cares so it's it's that that, it's the intermingling of those two energies that really creates that 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 really creates well here's the thing like like obviously me and johnny are 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 comedians so everything that we say is going to be peppered with a little bit of extremity a little bit a little bit yeah sometimes but uh like uh like like i'll say like like obviously when i say that women to me, are fucking monsters, devoid of a human soul, and yeah. incapable of empathy and love. <laughs> Obviously, that might sound extreme, and yeah. it is extreme, and I don't completely believe it, because if I did, I'd be a very, very sad, yeah. lonely person, even more than I already am. If you're a woman, but, yes, he would. You'd be like, this guy's an amazing teddy bear, and I absolutely love him. Yeah. You'd be like, oh my god, he's a horrible massage. He, 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 you'd, be, you'd probably want to fuck him. But as extreme, as extreme as it is, and as much as I don't completely believe it, any woman who who listens to that and hears that has to realize that there's a small part of me that does kind of think that. Yep. And obviously that small part of me wouldn't think that unless I had the experience to show that to me. Yeah. So yeah. if a woman hears that, her reaction in my mind should not be to be offended, but to look inside herself and think, I don't want to be the kind of woman who makes men think that way about women. Yep. Like, good- for example, when women complain about like men catcalling them, you know? Yeah. Like to me... Like, obviously, to us, we can't really relate to that. I mean, I kind of can, because people yell shit at me all the time in fucking public, and it makes me want to bust their goddamn fucking faces, but yeah, that's a whole like, different thing. Like, but it's cats like, who are like but obviously, like... Like I used to like, when I was in high school. Like, women complain about men objectifying them, and as much as I... As much as, like, men can't relate to that, any rational man can still be able to look inside themselves and say, yeah, in a purely empathetic human way, I can see how that would bother someone, so I'm not going to fucking be that guy, Right? So if I say that all my life women have have taken advantage of me and used me like a fucking sponge and then thrown me away when they were done with me, then I think a woman's reaction should be, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe there's parts of my gender that are fucking disgraceful to the human race, and maybe I should make an effort to be a decent person and not be like that in those ways. Do you not know any girls who are like that? Do I not know any girls who are like what? Decent? Johnny? Hey there, mate. I'm not talking to myself again. Well, perhaps have I been talking to myself this whole time? Is anything real, mate? Am I real? Is the world real? Is Australia real? I don't know, but I know that this delicious yellowtail chardonnay is real. And this is what I live for. Drinking this good old five dollar Australian wine. Hello? Hey! Fuck. What happened? I my think massage my, broke the podcast. I think I think my headset died. I think my oh did I steal a bear? No, I didn't. I think my headset that I have plugged in died somehow because I think my wires fucked up. Well, shit. Yeah. Is it okay now? I think so. Okay. Well, shit. What the fuck were we talking about? Um, I think we were talking about um how much women suck and how we all like having sex with men in their bums. Yeah. We were, we were trying like to educate women on why we hate them, which I yeah, think is yeah, a very exactly, important exactly, endeavor. Yes. It's a very yeah. important endeavor for, for men to... Yeah. Women yeah. need to be educated on why we hate them. It actually works really well, too, when you're single and you're trying to meet new women. It's like, if you just if you see an attractive girl and you start just kind of talking to her about, like, why her gender sucks, usually... Well, I mean, you can, your success might be a little bit different than mine, but you can usually take them home afterwards. 
Yeah, well, you know, I've always believed that honesty is the best policy, <laughs> even though even though objectively it's, it's been proven not to be. But I still <laughs> believe it for some reason. Really? You should. Yeah, uh... I, you said something to me earlier tonight before we started the podcast on Facebook. You said that what we hate about other people is what we hate about ourselves, something like that. That's a working theory that I have. That I think and they that got me thinking because, kind of, like, yeah. I can relate to that in the sense that I am a compulsively honest person. Mm. I, 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 I don't lie. I don't think I've ever lied about anything. I don't. Really, I don't even really have secrets. Maybe about not myself. to other people, but what about to yourself? Because I'm the worst liar that I am isn't to other people, it's to myself. Like, I, I fabricate things, I make myself believe things, like, all the time. Like, Well, maybe, but that's unquantifiable. Uh, but I mean, like, the thing is, like, I consider myself an honest person, and I would, I, I literally, I, I'm incapable of lying to a person's face, right? Yeah. So, and the thing that I hate most in the fucking world is, like, when people get away with lying and dishonest people. Why does that bother you? Because I don't know, it fucking hurts me with rage. I, I, I my, my blood boils. Like, even if it doesn't affect me, even if it's some someone that, I don't know. I don't like liars. Huh. I don't like dishonest fucking people. Well, I mean, it's obviously a good thing not to like that, but like, is that something that you carry with you? Like, does it, like if you if you see some like shitty like reality TV program where people are being like shitty to each other and lying, like, does that like piss you off and like you think about that for like a couple of hours for the rest of your day? Oh no, I'm not fucking crazy about it, but I mean like. <laughs> But I just like people in real life, like, 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 let's say, uh, well, it it should piss you off if people are like lying, yeah. being shitty. Like, if you don't have any sort of compass at all, then you're you're gonna just be like a, a shitty liar yourself. So. Like, let's say, like, a completely hypothetical situation, completely hypothetical situation. Like, if you were dating a girl and 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 uh, you had a crush or like feelings for another girl, and because you were an honest person, you sort of fessed up and you're like, you know what, this is how I feel. And you know that, and and that sort of like put a fucking bug in your relationship that sort of grew and disintegrated the whole thing from inside over the course of a year, and it fucking ruined your relationship by being honest. You shot yourself in the foot by being honest, okay? And then years later, you see, uh, you know, a certain girl who may or may not be the same girl, you know, was this in a relationship with another guy and fucking doing all kinds of dishonest shit and Let completely me... getting away with it, and you think to yourself, hmm, why do you get away with this shit when I was honest and it ruined the relationship? Let me tell you something about Completely honesty. Completely hypothetical situation there. Of course, but let me tell you something about honesty, and this goes for a lot of things, is that it's all about right place at the right time. Like, it's it's good to be an honest person, but it's bad to say something honest when the time isn't the proper time to say it. And it's a very, very difficult and almost like fine art to, like, have something important to say and wait for the exact right opportune moment to say it to like I, I, I've been learning myself recently about creating environments like creating environment to have a certain discussion with somebody about um, like and that, and that goes for both like talking to people online and offline like there's there's a difference between sitting down at a coffee shop with someone or sitting down at a restaurant or sitting down at your apartment or, <clears throat> or sitting down at the park those will all institute like a different kind of environment for the conversation to progress um and it's I, i'm not i'm not saying like withhold things from people necessarily but i'm saying that there's a time and a place for everything and that sometimes there's simply no place for some things and that it will just simply suck and that you'll have something that you want to say and there won't be a time or a place for it and you'll probably oh, hold on I, to it and then I can probably eventually lose that i yeah. mean it's like it's like <clears throat> It's like a crippling fucking disability being the way I am. Like, because it's like, it's almost a compulsion to just like tell the truth and just be forward and an open book about everything to my detriment. And it's caused me nothing but misery and strife in my life. It really is like a fucking, like a a disability. Yeah, so fucking fix it. To be honest in a dishonest, I don't want to. I take pride in it. I like being honest. No, you don't. I do. It makes me feel superior. Not in the way that causes you like pain and suffering and shit. Well, I like feeling, I like feeling better than people. What? See, that's me being honest again. (laughs) <laughs> you like feeling better than people? Well, you know, there's a pride there, you know? Like, I'm not a fucking liar like you scum. <laughs> there's a sense for, of pride for, in okay, it. Okay, okay, if we're talking from a comedic standpoint, I'm completely with you, but if we're talking, like, actually, like, real, then I don't, I don't think I can side with that. Dude, I, don't think, I don't think it's a good thing to think that you're better than other people. Didn't you, didn't you, <laughs> didn't you know that I'm completely psychotic? You didn't know? Sorry, I was, I was pitching. I was like, okay, you know the first scene in Saw? 
like you know when they're like the two guys are like chained in that room and like they're they're chained up and they're like that then finally near the end of the movie the one guy has to like actually saw through his own fucking leg and after he does like his face is all like white and he's all he's you know he's like basically dying from fucking blood loss he's like you know i'll go get help for some reason, that was what I was picturing when you said, "Don't you know I was completely psychotic?" And I was like having a different <laughs> flashback of like seeing that that scene in the fucking Saw movie. So, no, okay, totally, I'm, totally, I'm a fucking mental case. I admit it. I'm out of my mind. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I, I have fucking I have I have more issues than I have sperm on this fucking dish towel here. <laughs> dish towel. Yeah, that I keep at my desk next to graduated, my fucking laptop. Graduated up from the uh, the Jerry cloth up to the dish towel. <laughs> must have found a new porn site. You gotta tell me about it. Yeah, but you know what's uh, <laughs> what you know it's a fucking what the fuck. But you know we're all fucking crazy, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what's, I mean that's my favorite thing about like talking to people and being friends with someone is that it's so much easier to when you're the other person listening to someone else's problems. It's it's good to be that other person and be able to help them see it yep. from outside themselves. Like yep. that to me, honestly. And I fucking I don't know why I say this shit. I give so much of myself away to fucking public. I'm just so much of an open book, and it kind of annoys me about myself. I'll admit that. Right away. But I'll be but like, like. It gives like the most fulfilling thing in the world for me, is when is when the brief moments, when someone that I love or like a friend actually needs me to be there and i'm there and i can be that fucking like i, I wish i had gone to school to be a therapist i really do because it fulfills me it makes me feel good you don't need to go to school to be a therapist i know i i mean i don't if you want to if you want to get at. paid money like to be a therapist yeah, then you have to I mean. go to school but i mean like i like that's... it it's like yeah i have like a fetish for listening to people's problems and being nice to them you know i have a fetish for kindness interesting, interesting. i mean like I, I like i mean it's not like i'm coming to it but it's like you know, it make I, I I like, I like like, I don't know, like that girl I was talking about before. Yep. Like uh, one of the reasons that I that I still consider her so important to me, is I remember you know so many times, so many times I've gotten drunk and made a fool of myself and cried to her, about my problems. Mm. But I remember just one time. Some shit was fucked up in her life, and just one time, she lost it and cried in my arms. And I guess that fucking activated some kind of animal protective fucking male thing inside me. Of course maybe. it did. Of course, but, uh, yeah. Of course, but it, to me, it couldn't not. <laughs> yeah, but to me, it, even so, like, it makes me feel good being there for my friends, you know? Yeah. And then and anytime that shit happens and anytime I get to be the, um, anytime I get to be the, the, the fucking cushy teddy bear to fucking cry into, you know? I like that. It makes that's me a very, it's, that's a very powerful thing. And, um, be very careful with it, especially with females, because as a guy, you'll have a tendency to be the shoulder to cry on with girls a lot more than you should. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's something that. you, have to, like... you have to kind of learn about that. But, I mean, like, as far as, like, being, like, a really good friend and, like, like, like being there to, like, legitimately sit down with people and, and talk to them and, like, really, really be someone they can talk to, who they can tell anything, who they're not going to be judged, yeah. um, that – it, that is something that's like the, one of the most valuable things, and that that when you when you're able to be that kind of person, um, it, it good things good things come back to you. Like it's just that's something that I, I want to do, all, like ex- exclusively with my life is like try to be that person for everybody. Like it's it's such a good it's like because anyone I have anyone I've ever had who's been that person for me, it's been like the greatest thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to do that because like that was the best thing ever. So. Maybe I can like reproduce that for somebody else. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting <laughs> that you say to like be careful to not become like the friend. You know. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because like, like I've been reading like a lot about gender lately, like for the last year, really. Yeah. And I've been like getting really into like reading about this stuff and like, like even game theory. As much as like the guys who are into that kind of completely go fucking insane with it and kind of lose their minds a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, like, but it is interesting, because, like, all it really is is, like, understanding, like, women's biology and, like, what not to do and how not to be a fucking loser and how not to be a bait and, like, fall (laughs) into that friend trap, you know? Right, A lot of them, but but at the same time, a lot of them go so overboard with it that they, like, lose their humanity a little bit. Yeah. And it's a weird thing to think, like, where is that cutoff line between knowing how not to be, how not to get into that friend trap 
and how to still be a fucking human being and not yeah, fucking it's, completely it's, lead yourself to the hatred. Yeah. And I think what you just said is kind of, I think what you just said is the line. I mean, like, say you're with a girl and she's confiding with you and, and, and you know about all this stuff. You've read this stuff like, like I have, like everyone does when they fucking go through yeah. a breakup and are depressed for a year. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she's fucking conf confiding in you and she's crying to you and she wants you to be there and be a friend for her. And you have the choice between thinking, if I fucking let her cry on my shoulder, she'll never be attracted to me. Or thinking, fuck it, she needs me right now. You have that choice. And I think when you choose not to show kindness, you lose your humanity. Simple as that. And that's when you go over the deep end. Even if it means sacrificing the chance to ever get pooned from that girl. If you yeah. respect your own humanity... Yeah. You choose to be the fucking friend when she needs you because that's yeah, what friends do. Bottom line. Yeah, there's, and, but there's also a boundary you would set in that instance too, right? Because like you can, you can, if she's having like a bad fucking time and you still like her and you still want to fuck her and like be with her and whatnot, and she's having a bad time, she wants to cry on your shoulder. Um, you got to set the if, if you if we actually want to do the good thing, you set the boundary for yourself. Where if she's like, oh my god, I just broke up with my boyfriend, and everything is like going to hell. Like, can I come over tonight? I just want to be with somebody. What do you think is gonna fucking happen there? Like she's she's doing the fucking rebound thing and she's probably gonna want to fuck. So oh yeah, and, and that's, that's where... and, and unless you set the boundary, okay. And if you do that, if you do that, if you, if you let that happen, then you're not being you're not being like you're not taking the actual like friend path where you're doing the good thing. You're like okay, well I can get, get, get I can get fucking laid, and you can oh, convince yeah. yourself in a whole host of different ways that that's not what you're doing, but that's exactly what you're doing. Um, yeah, but I really do take pride in that in being. A friend, even if it even if it meant I never got pussy again for the rest of my fucking life, I take pride in it, and I, I get laid occasionally. So I, <laughs> I guess I guess I guess it's, I guess I'm doing the right thing, you know. Yeah, but it's it's, it's just it's hard for guys to separate them properly, I guess. Um, yeah. It's I I'm dropping shit on my desk here. Um, yeah, no, it, it's 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 hard for guys to separate that properly because I see so many people, including myself, so many times. Um, <laughs> You know what? I think that's where, like, I think that's where, like, my whole, like, honesty thing almost becomes, like, a defense mechanism for me of, like, I can be the friend, but, like, I'm open enough that all my, I'm, like, I let all my, all my girlfriends, friend girls know that I'm fucking attracted to you. I mean, you'd have to be stupid not to realize that. I mean, yeah. that's where my honesty sort of becomes, like, a defense mechanism. Like, I'll be your friend, but you know goddamn well that... I'm going to have boners for you, so just fucking yep. deal with that, you yep. know? I don't yeah, know. I just try to just... find my own equilibrium, and I guess that's what everything's about. Yeah, it's it's a growth process. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is to be like, I figured everything out, and everything sucks. And everything is just going to suck because nothing works out the way it's supposed to because I figured everything out, and it all sucks. Because everything changes. Your entire understanding of the world and what everything is just it's okay it's been my personal experience anyways that your entire understanding of the world what everything is just continues to change and develop and i'm like i'm i'm fucking 31 i'm 31 and like everything that i know and the, all the things that i think that i know are far beyond anything i could have imagined five years ago and i can only scarcely fathom what i might think and know about the world when i'm like 50 like uh, i wish i could live a thousand years well see it all Maybe you, I wish George you, Carlin was still alive. It's too bad the kikes killed him. We're telling the <laughs> truth. <laughs> yeah, they, they gave fucking, him cancer. They, fucking they, they NSA him shot him with their chem trails. With their heart attack gun. Their They've heart been attack secretly gun. developing since the '60s. Uh, actually, the heart attack gun is actually real. There's a. I know. I've been. Well, yeah. It. Okay. So you're. Yeah. So yeah. The, the CIA heart attack gun. Fuck. That's crazy, man. That's fucking crazy. That that government shit. That like secret operative like killing people shit. Fuck that world. I want. You know I think it's possible. World. I think it's possible that they had George Carlin killed. Because who dies at 69, honestly? I don't know. Lots of people. Well, if you keep not... eating those fucking cheeseburgers in your goddamn profile pic, you're probably going to die at fucking 69. Jesus Christ, man. When was this... the last time you actually ate a piece of fruit? Like a okay, legit wait... piece of fruit? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you seriously assuming that I'm always eating the same cheeseburger yeah. from my profile? The same one, yeah. You do realize that that was a photograph that was taken once, and it's just been up. You do realize how photographs work. No, I, I was assuming this is like a live feed for you just constantly eating this cheeseburger in <laughs> super slow motion. I did have a cheeseburger today, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, George Carlin. I mean, anybody, I, anybody who has any sort of political ideal or any any sort of anti-establishment thing to say at all ever, if they die, I don't think I could ever discount the, the maybe the theory that maybe there's some alternative force that has something to do with it. I mean, because that kind of shit is just obvious. It's like. Someone is saying something that somebody else doesn't like, and maybe they want to kill them or shorten their lives. Like, that's just... If you I play, know I don't want to kill people who say things I don't like. Yeah, if you play enough Civilization, like, you know how the game works, and if somebody's, like, being a fucknut, like, you know what, I'm just going to slowly surround your little empire here with a bunch of my units and tear up the old peace treaty and invade your fucking country and kill you. I'm sure real life is like that all the time. It's exactly like a video game. Seriously, though, um, I would say that art imitates life and not the other way around. Man, so we went from Super Mario Brothers to, to Blue's Reviews to the first time I got drunk to this fucking girl that I had a crush on to this other girl that I had a crush on to my fucking philosophies on women to fucking our philosophies on life <laughs> to George Carlin to our fucking kite conspiracy theories. Oh, man. This is just this is just a party cast. Let me tell you. I, I just want everyone to know that I'm completely an anti-Semite. Me like, too. Completely, yeah. Definitely. Um, like, there's <laughs> it's not a, yeah, there's not a whole lot of races out there that, like, I truly despise and that I would actually, like, call out and, like, yell curse words at in public. But the, the Jewish community, definitely. Def- I, anyone listening anyone listening who disagrees, uh, stop listening to this podcast. That's right. I said it. That's right. <laughs> Stop listening to this fucking podcast, you kite son of a bitch. That's Go right. into your fucking vault with all your Jew gold. <laughs> Take all the fucking foreskins <laughs> that you've stolen from Christian baby boys, tie them into a noose, and fucking hang yourself with the fucking foreskins, you kike, commie, cocksucker. Dude, I don't know if you ever saw this video, but um, like back when I lived in BC, um, like my buddy Dustin, like total Jew boy, um, he came over this one time. He came over a couple times. We played some games, made some videos and shit like that. We were watching like uh, some old VHS tapes that I had, and one of them was like this old Superman um, tape. And like at the start of it, I like I just get this feeling. I'm like, I know this animation. I know I know this old style animation. There's probably gonna be something offensive in it. And it starts off in, in, in like the the second cartoon, um, where it's like it's basically like World War uh, Two, and it's like you know like the Nazis fighting and shit like that. And uh, all of a sudden, like, I don't know, some plane lands somewhere in, like, some, like, tropical land. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, okay, dude, I'm like, if we see, like, a picture of somebody, like, with a bone through their nose, or, like, if there's, like, if there's like a, you know, a racial stereotype of some native black guy with, like, a bone through his nose, like, we, we have to take a drink. And, like, sure enough, sure enough, sure fucking enough, um, yeah, they're, they, they flash that on the screen during this part where, like, somebody's getting, like, hypnotized or someone's doing some dance. I don't fucking remember. I'm fucking drunk. But, like, at, at the end, like, it has, like, full-on fucking Hitler in, like, this Superman cartoon. And I'm, like, sitting here next to, like, fucking Dustin. Like, so it's like, yeah, Dustin, come over to my place. We're, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a couple beers. We'll watch some old cartoons like that. Oh, yeah, we're, let's watch some Superman cartoons. Oh, yeah, yeah, here's a Superman cartoon with fucking Hitler in it. How do you like that? Um, but he's, he's, he's a, he doesn't take himself too seriously. He's a, he's, he's a fucking awesome guy. So. How do you Actually, like that, you yeah. son of a bitch? He's, he's one, of the, one of the people I miss most from, uh, from my hometown. I'll say that. Dustin, if you're listening, I miss you, motherfucker. Come out to Calgary, you piece of shit. Come the fuck out to Calgary. You fuck. Do it! Yeah. Stop selling those shitty cell phones <laughs> in Abbotsford. That life sucks. I did it. I tried it. I did that life, and it sucks. There's better things in Calgary. Get out here. Get out of Abbotsford. It's terrible. It's terrible. Oh my god, I just said the name of my actual whole town. Okay, everybody, now look me up. Um, uh, track my family down. Um, send them, like, dildos and shit. And, um, I don't know, make up stories to the police and just say I did horrible things. Ruin my life, please. <laughs> because, I mean, I don't think it's... I don't think it could get a whole lot worse. It could probably get a little bit worse, yeah, but... Uh, we'll see. We'll see what you guys can come up with. I'm so proud of, like, where I live in mm-hmm. the world. Because I live, I won't say the exact area, but I live, like, in the tri-state, in the tri-city area. You live in America. That's fucking yeah. disgusting. No, I, yeah, obviously. I mean, a fucking third-world fascist hellhole, but... How many brown kids did your president kill today with his remote-controlled death machines? Oh, at least Seven? a thousand. At least a thousand. He's a thousand. <laughs> up to a thousand per day. Dude, if you... If you think if Obama you... with his, like, remote control, like, this, like, fucking space invaders, like, keyboard, just, like, <laughs> just bombing these fucking brown children in the fucking Middle East. 
Oh, dude, I, I'm more concerned with all the... Uh... He beats off to his highest scores. Oh, yeah, 500,000 points. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm more concerned with all of the impoverished American citizens who are routinely detained and beaten to a bloody pulp by police officers across that's the nation awesome. every day. Yeah, that's that's really cool what America's doing with that these days. Yeah, I, I love I, I love uh I love that uh that a whole war on the poor thing they got going on for the last thirty yeah, years. It's fantastic. I know, I know that's I, like, basically if you're poor and uneducated, you just get yeah. beat up like shit. Like it's like total multi class like caste system. And, I love and, being the public and enemy of my own country. I just yeah. love it. I know, and, but the best part, best part is, like, people don't even pay attention to it. Like, we all think that we have equal opportunity. It's awesome. Dude, I remember when I was maybe 17. I could have been 16. I could have been 18. Whatever year uh, the Tur- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 came out, the, the CG one, because it was the day that we were going to see that. We were waiting on the side of the road in a car for another group of our friends to come join us. And from us waiting on the side of the road, a cop came by and assumed we were part of a drug deal. In her fucking insane cop head. Nice. And she saw and, and and she came. She questioned us. My buddy Juan, who was driving, he's Mexican. So there you go. She was questioning him like so ridiculously he, he hard about it. Huh? He had at least an eight ball on him because he's Mexican. Well, yeah, but that's besides the point. Mm. <laughs> so my buddy, I mean, she sees the fucking Mexican guy driving. She's drilling him with these questions. Yeah. And then she starts questioning me because I'm in the back. And I have fucking long hair, like down to my, my down to my chest at that point. Yeah. And uh, because because the police because 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 the because they're adults and they're idiots and they're from like the sixties, and they think that like drug addicts all have long hair because they don't know how drug addicts actually look nowadays. They don't realize that kids today look different. They assume that because I have long hair that I'm like a drug addict or a drug dealer, because they assume we're all dealing drugs. You're so not. She, so she shifts the focus. Of course not. I'm an upstanding <laughs> citizen. So she Me shifts too. the focus. She shifts the focus yeah. from from my friend Juan, the Mexican driver, to me, the long-haired fucking poor-ass, clearly trailer trash white kid in the back, and she starts grilling me. Why? And And you know how I am. I've... <laughs> I've been in so much trouble with with, with the police in my life. <laughs> yeah, we were, I, talking, we were talking about the other day on Skype about... We were, we were talking about, like, the seats in the backs of cop cars and how I was saying, like, yeah. they, they had some sort of vinyl cushioning. It was attached with Velcro that you could. I mean, because people are gonna like barf and vomit and like shit in the back of police cars, but like at well, least they could have some that, kind like, of cushioning and not just that hard plastic seat. So. Well, even though it's gotten me into trouble in my life, this is something that I take pride in. I don't yeah. let myself be bullied. <laughs> no, I, I don't let okay. myself be fucking bullied. Yeah. Or intimidated. Yeah. I don't fucking. If. <laughs> I fucking talk back. I'm a fucking asshole. But like. I mean, when when this fucking lady's grilling me, I'm for, for no fucking reason because I have long hair and I'm white trash and I'm yeah. fucking poor basically she's yeah. fucking grilling me she's asking me these questions and i'm like i didn't fucking do anything you bitch get out of my face dude dude okay i've talked I, to a lot of cops in my life no, no, i don't know you. if i said bitch, no, no, it, but... it, like okay even even when a cop is being a dick if you show them the slightest bit of respect and you humble yourself a little bit like obviously stand up for your rights don't get pushed over be careful with it what, what you say but if you treat them with a little bit of respect even if you're in a bad situation even if you're like Let's let's say for a hypothetical example, hypothetically, you're caught behind a 7-Eleven somewhere where there is a a, a, a a trailer that has a bunch of like wood and pieces of shit in it. And you're just drunk and inside it, throwing shit all over a parking lot and police just happen to show up. Um, if you if, if you're if you're basically very honest with the police and simply say that you were in a horrible mood that night that that I've clearly been drinking and that um let me just say that if if you're, if you're honest with the police and uh and, and you're like a decent person to them you would be shocked at how much you can get away with I just can't um, you know like you know like I'm just gonna blame it on on the fact that I'm Irish and just <laughs> leave it at that I just don't I just fucking can't take it I just even today I haven't learned my lesson at all and I, I don't think I ever will I'm as, I'm I'm at least half as mean to the police as they am to me, as they are to me. <laughs> well, okay. The thing is, the, the police are okay. The police deal with people who are assholes all day long. Their entire job is to deal with people who are lying to them constantly. And yeah, no, okay. Well, now, like, now don't, don't get me wrong. I'm like one of the like like of anyone you have on Facebook. I probably post the most like anti-establishment, like fuck the police, government bullshit of like anyone you know. But at the same time, like the police are clearly a very important 
important part of our like well, structured society. Well, here's and how some of them are myself. good. Uh, here's how I'll defend myself. I'm. Uh, I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm. I'm not always mean first. <laughs> usually it's them that's mean first. Usually. So well, okay. usually I at least can say they started it. Well, the, okay, the, the attitude that we get back from people is most often the one that we first give off. Exactly, but sometimes, and, and the but police... Sometimes, but sometimes it's the other way around, but we still have the choice as to whether or not we want to reflect what yeah, we Yeah, and the, the police felicitate, facilitate that by being sociopathic bullies. I mean, if they yes, showed... The, some, if, they some, showed yeah, they if the police showed people respect, then they'd get more respect back than they do. Then they wouldn't have as many people like me fucking going full Irish on their asses. Yeah, but what if what if everyone respects the police? What if we live in this wonderful, utopian, unbelievable society where just nobody committed any crimes, and any time something happened, the police need to be involved, and it was somebody where like somebody was hurt, or somebody needed to be rescued. Well, or, she started it. Yeah, well, <laughs> That's all I'm saying. And besides, yeah. you know what? I fucking am all for crimes. Whenever I see a fucking, I root for the criminals when I see a crime movie. I'm, I'm definitely for certain kinds of crimes. I'm fucking Team Heisenberg all the way. Yeah, I don't I don't believe that the, the, the current set of laws we have are just. And I don't think anyone anywhere should be like, well, that's the law. That's that's the law. We have to abide by it. No, fuck that. What do you mean that's the law? You mean that you mean that like some other regular human being who is just like you, who has the same hopes and dreams and fears and desires, and still fucking like jerks off to porn, like wipes her ass and looks at the fucking brown smudge of toilet paper before they throw in the toilet. You're you're telling me that like somebody out there just gets to decide what you do in your life, and you're fine with that? Like that's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's, like, you really that's think about it. That's fucking crazy. And I get that we have to do that to a certain extent because there's like there's very powerful people out there who are who basically control a lot of our fucking shit. But in my little private life where I'm at peace with every man and I'm not hurting anybody else, I I don't abide by that at all. Fuck it. You know what? I, you Fuck. know what I'm like. You know what I'm like when I'm dealing with authority figures. <laughs> Here's a good analogy. Um. If if anyone's ever heard of Stone Cold Steve Austin, I, I've never heard of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh my god! I, I've, Probably I, I know exactly who he is. I'm being an okay. asshole. Okay, Probably the second most famous important wrestler of all time behind Hulk Hogan. Hmm. In the late '90s, he was a pretty. He was the biggest you could possibly be as a wrestler. He was pretty much almost a legit sports star, I guess. Um, his whole gimmick was that was basically fuck authority figures and his whole gimmick was that he had this feud with his boss and he wouldn't take shit and when his boss got in his face or when the police got in his face or yep. authority figures he'd talk right back and he was the toughest SOB on the planet and he would and, and no one could do anything about it because he was the motherfucking man basically he was the fucking yeah. working class hero yep. who stood up to the boss and that was his whole thing and he was a phenomenon for it basically yeah. what I am I'm like Stone Cold Steve Austin how that would work out in real life and not in a, in, a, in a wrestling scripted scenario. No, you, you know you are, how you actually be like that? How you actually be like still... Like, I stand, up, I stand up to them. I stand up to the authority figures. And long story short, that story ends with me on the hood of a cop car getting punched in the fucking face by some redneck cop with chewing tobacco in his <laughs> mouth and fucking aviator sunglasses who's like 53 years old and gets his jollies off by screaming at 15-year-old kids Jeez. and throwing me in the back of a cop car. So I'm like how Stone Cold Steve Austin would work out in real life. That's how I describe my. That's how. I was, I, that's I was, how I act. I was picturing that entire scene. I'm sorry, it was a wonderful vision. It is a wonderful vision. It's not. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I was gonna say before. I was gonna say. I was gonna say before. Uh, to actually do that. To actually. To actually be like that kind of character in real life. Okay. Obviously, you couldn't. You can do that in real life because you. Would oh yeah. Like, he's a. He's a, he's a fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. But like to actually do the Why same. To do the same thing. To do the same thing in this real life is possible you just don't get fame or credit for it like you can still you can still yeah. you, you can you can still basically have that same same attitude where it's like like well unless you're okay there's, there's a way there's a way to say there's a way to say fuck authority um but at the same time realizing that you're part of the system and you're living within it and you like parts of it and you can get along with it but deciding to do your own thing as long as it doesn't interfere with what the system is doing because the system will fuck you up. They they have guns and they have armored cars and they have police and government officials and if you fuck with what they're doing, they will fuck you up. And as I, I found that as long as you do your own thing 
and it's not fucking them up. You know, you, you pay your taxes, you work, you contribute. As long as you're doing that, what you do on the side, as long as it's not fucking up their economy or, or things like that, you can basically they, you just kind of get left alone. And yeah. and and to the NSA out there who's listening right now, um, <laughs> thank you for keeping America safe. Suck um, my fucking dick. Yeah, uh, definitely Tommy suck my dick. Suckers. But I understand that I'm sure a lot of you really think that you're doing something good, and some of you are probably just simply evil. But to any of you NSA people listening, please leave me alone. I I don't I don't want to cause trouble for anybody. I'm just trying to survive. I'm really just trying to survive. You know what? Yeah, but what if there was like a real life equivalent? Of Stone Cold. I'm just waiting for some brave hero who is more courageous than me to do what needs to be done. I will follow that revolution. I'm just waiting on it, waiting for the revolution to come, waiting for some hero. Why would you wait for a hero? Why? It seems like you already have a vision. Why not just be it? Why not have other people wait for you? Because I'm a coward. I don't want to go to jail and get beat up and shot and killed. I want someone else to do it. Why would you have to go to jail? Because my idea of a hero yep, yep. was somebody who throws pipe bombs into police stations across <laughs> America, Johnny. I thought you knew me by now. I thought you knew what I meant when I said hero. Of a hero is somebody who throws pipe bombs into police stations. It is. Don't you know this about me by now? <laughs> oh my god. That's <laughs> a hero. I'm not talking about some pussy fucking Spider-Man getting a cat out of a tree. I'm talking about a real hero, Murray a revolutionary Goss. who's going to fix things for the rich, for the poor, and for everyone in between, for all the free people of this world, who's going to do what needs to be done. That's who I'll follow from the safety of my armchair, not getting in trouble myself. All right. <laughs> so. Oh, fuck. Pipe bombs, police stations, true freedom. <laughs> That's great. That's if good. anyone out there is inspired by my words and crazy enough to go forth and do what needs to be done, yeah. CIA Dave, I'm sure yeah. you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely start a revolution. <laughs> I mean, like, 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 get get a bunch of guns. Um, I start riots and like. Just, you know, get a whole bunch of people killed is what I'm trying to say here. Just, like, you know, do something stupid. Get get a whole bunch of people killed for the right cause, though, of course. God, I just I just can't wait for the day when shit starts, starts backfiring back in the government's direction and they start it reaping has. what they sow. It, it already has. Like If it hasn't, it's close. It, I mean, definitely. It, 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 close? Like, look at the internet, man. Look how desperate they are to fucking fuck around with the internet. Yeah, like we can suddenly everyone on the planet can like communicate. Yeah, with, I, I I read about all of a sudden now we like know about all these like horrible things. Like, like kids who grew up with the internet are considered radicals for reading yeah, too much. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah, we're we're domestic terrorists now. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, like the, my entire purpose when I go online isn't to like actually try to make the world a better place. It's because I want to incite riots and like like cause people like pain and suffering. Well, you know, I've always been definitely a domestic, domestic terrorist, terrorist because. Oh, yeah. when, because yeah. whenever I go to Burger King, I throw my train in the trash after I'm done. Oh eating. my God, you too! <laughs> I've I've specifically done that a couple of times. I'm known throughout the Tri City area as as the tray trasher. The tray no one knows my true identity, but I just revealed it. See, we <laughs> okay. wanted posters of like <laughs> years years ago, back when I was like a good little Christian kid. Um, we used to go to this youth group thing called. Uh, I probably shouldn't say actually the name. We used to go to this youth group thing, and um. And it was, like, me and a couple of friends that kind of, like, hung out. And a lot of times we didn't even, like, go to the thing. We just kind of, like, drove around and, like, went to Burger King and places and whatnot. But um, we all eventually earned nicknames. For example, one of my friends was sitting on something, and it turned out to be Nickel. So his nickname was Ass Nickel. And my other friend decided to throw his tray away in the Burger King trash. He did not put it back on top. He threw it into the garbage. His very own tray he threw into the garbage. And his nickname was Trey after that. Yeah. Yes. Now you know. Now you know. We had we had this stupid thing where um we would we'd get like a whole bunch of Burger King crowns. So we like think of like retarded like fucking pranks for each other to do, and then like you would like earn a crown, and like whoever got the most crowns won. For we did it maybe like twice. So it actually really wasn't uh, that great of a story. Now that I've told it, so uh, you tell one now. Fuck. Oh, uh, you anyway. know what's amazing. Before we started this podcast, like right before, like an hour before we started doing it, we both wrote down like a list of games that we wanted to talk about. Yep. 
And I have like fucking like 20 games written down. We got through one of them, yep. which was like Super Mario Brothers 3. Yep. Talked about Mario 3 and then nothing else. And how fantastic is that? That yeah. we still have all this shit to talk about in future iterations of the podcast. Yep. I'm so fucking glad that we decided to start this podcast together. I completely agree, and I want to see this happen every week. This is fantastic. Yes. All you people listening, you're welcome. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you should you should probably like buy us a birthday cake when it gets to be our birthdays. Um, like whatever page we have on Facebook when whatever we do with this podcast is posted. Which will be posted before you hear this, and so, oh my God, it's like Inception, like <laughs> like talking about something that hasn't happened that's going to happen, and telling them about what's going to happen. Um, how many beers have I had tonight? Ten. I've had a bottle and a half of wine. Wow. One of which was delicious yellowtail chardonnay. <laughs> yellowtail chardonnay, bloody chanda. And the other was some shitty fucking California peanut grigio bullshit. Who cares? It's not Australian. Yeah, that tail Chardonnay. Delicious. Get out five dollar wine. I'm watching. That's how we get drunk in Australia. <laughs> I'm watching Oster. Skype that that's for Listerine. So I'm I'm picturing all these like drunken natives chugging Listerine. Oh and man, yes, tune in next week when we drink I Listerine. I know that's horrendous and offensive and racist to say. Uh, but apparently it's actually true, and I never really understood like the the, the racial stereotype that went on about like the Indo-Canadian population. And I don't think it exists in every town, but in Calgary, it's a very sad thing because a lot of the homeless people are the native Indo-Canadians. And yes, sometimes you will see an empty bottle of Listerine in an alleyway. And sweet Jesus, what the fuck? I don't know why that happens. I don't understand enough about what is going on in my own fucking country to know why a specific race of people is frequently homeless in my fucking town. I mean, this I episode of the Bits and Booze Party Cast is dedicated to all descendants of North American natives. Yes, yes. No, I, I don't. Our thoughts understand. and prayers are with you. Our yeah. thoughts and prayers to the coyote god with the <laughs> with the magic oh. penis or whatever the fuck oh, no. you Ta- savages believe in. God, that was voiced <laughs> by uh, Willie Nelson that bit Homer after he had the insanity pepper. Yes. <laughs> I was thinking of Coyote from Man, Gargoyles. Bro Same God, just different depictions of it. <laughs> That's a good episode. <laughs> you know what sucks is the fact mm. that I think I'm actually finally sick of The Simpsons. I mean, yeah, I'm, I know the feeling. I love The Simpsons. If, if, if you said, hey, Johnny, let's watch an episode of The Simpsons right now, I would. Um, but... I, I don't. I, you know what? Just last week was like the newest uh, Treehouse of Horror. I, I gotta see it. I have to see it. I just haven't. Dude, one of the ep- one of the one of the shorts in it was uh the plot was that uh Bart gets his head sewn onto Lisa's body. Yeah. And the whole time I'm thinking, uh, didn't this shit fucking happen in season sure three, enough. like twenty years ago, with Homer and Mr. Burns? Oh, it did happen with Homer and Mr. Yeah. Burns. They yeah. are they're it ripping off happened. their cells at this oh. point, and in Futurama. Yeah. They're ripping off themselves at this point. Well, They're I mean, so that's fucking the well so that's, dry. That's that's probably Matt Groening coming up with, coming up with shit. Um, I haven't seen a lot of the like the new seasons of Simpsons. I kind of stopped around like fifteen, sixteen, and then I watched like a bit of like twenty twenty one, and then after that, I really, I honestly haven't seen anything. Um, I just, I didn't like what a lot of new writers were doing, and I know it sounds like the stupidest hipster thing, but like I really, I really followed the Simpsons very closely. And then watch all the DVDs and watch all the commentaries and then... <sighs> you know how you can really tell how far The Simpsons has fallen? Is when you watch the Celebrity Guest episodes. Yeah. Because in the old days, like say Michael Jackson comes on. Yeah. They have him play a character that's part of a story. Yeah. And he serves the story. Nowadays, Lady Gaga comes on and the story serves Lady Gaga. Yeah. And the whole episode is about, oh, wow, Lady Gaga comes to Springfield or wow... The yeah. fucking cast of Friends comes to Springfield, and yeah. it's just so fucking hacky. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, with, with, with that specific Michael Jackson episode, um, they got Michael Jackson's actual voice, but because of legal obligations, they couldn't put him in the credits, so they couldn't actually depict Michael Jackson. So, like, it that was the real Michael Jackson, but they could not ever say it was from any sort of legal copyrighted standpoint. Um, but I, I know exactly what you're saying, where it's like, it, instead of having, like, somebody, like, voice a character... 
now it's like, oh, hey, look, there's a character of The Simpsons. And, like, yeah. at the same time, though, if there was any show ever, ever that I would want to continue on as long as it has, it would be this. I could not think of any show in the entire world that I would want to just keep going and have them keep making episodes up because it's the fucking Simpsons. It's the Simpsons. It, anybody who says the Simpsons sucks, I want nothing to do with them. I could go for about 300 more seasons of Dragon Ball Z. Well, uh, that's, <laughs> that's 300 episodes. We one season, so. <laughs> Basically how that show works. Yeah. You know what? Did, did you know that uh, Michael Jackson also composed the music for Sonic the Hedgehog 3? Really? I found that out recently. He didn't want to be credited with it because um, I guess he thought it like wasn't up to par. or I don't know the exact reasons. It's been a while since You're I read kidding. about it. I recently found out that he composed all the music for Sonic 3. Seriously? Yeah. Where 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 did you find that out at? Um, I don't know, but you can Google it. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. I'll trust you, but yeah. Huh. Michael Jackson, he's the fucking shit. He is the shit. He he really is the shit, and I never started liking his music until I got a little bit older and realized, holy shit, this guy is the shit. Stuff with him and kids. Um I don't know. You know what? I've said this in a video Possibly, before. Possibly, gonna... probably, but I don't know. Uh, well, here's really the thing. It doesn't change the fact that he didn't make some of the most amazing music of all time. That... Here's the thing. An adult relationship between two consenting adults, a man and a woman, usually, you know, the man's paying for dinner, the man's buying the woman's shit, diamond rings, you know, whatever she wants, letting her drive his car, you know? Yeah. So uh, you take that, and uh, you take a grown man and a little boy, but Michael Jackson's rich, so, you know, he's still buying the kid's shit. He's taking care of the kid just like a man would take care of his wife. So, really, okay, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> that's the worst, yeah, that's, that's the worst thing that's ever been said on the internet. That's, that's, yeah. I don't think we can be friends anymore. I didn't find that funny at all. Um, yes, that did. was actually highly offensive to me. Um, I, I really don't want to say, I, I really don't know what to say to you right now, Mr. Jesse Wood. But uh, I think we had a good idea for a podcast, and now um, I'm having second thoughts. I don't think that this is going to work. So, you know, uh, to everyone listening right now, that was, a, that was a great first and last episode of the Bits and Booth Party Cast. You can tune in next time, which will be just me talking to myself about myself, about Chaos Theory and Jeff Goldblum and the up-and-coming Jurassic Park movie, Jurassic Park 4, which apparently is going to be a thing. So... Um, I am a pedophile. Well, <laughs> I'm just going to finish this beer here. I'm going to finish my wine. Oh, little kids, you want to come over to my house and play some Barbie? Yes. Yes, they do. Touch my testicles and play some Barbie. Um, I also just realized that uh, one of the beers that I had earlier that I put down on the ground and then forgot about, I spilled, and now my carpet is a little bit wet. Yeah. So, I'm kind of sad for the loss of that beer. Just pee on it. Pee, pee, pee <laughs> on the, pee on the... Pee, uh, on the, pee on the spill, and you'll have a bigger problem, and you'll forget about the spill. Oh my god, that's brilliant. Okay, hold on. Oh, it's, it's fucking just like fly. Fuck. It's just like you know. It just goes back to Michael Jackson. You know, I'm going through a, a, a big divorce with Priscilla, so uh, I'll touch some kids, get myself a bigger problem, forget about the divorce. <laughs> Wasn't he married to Priscilla? Pretty sure. I don't, I don't know. I was I like so. four. I was Priscilla like four Presley. years old at the time. I was four. He probably touched me, and I just regressed it and forgot about it. Man, do you remember? Do you remember watching O.J. Simpson running from the police in the white Bronco on TV? I don't. I must have been like oh, five man. years old, maybe. That was, was awesome. That? I, have, I have the best memory of that. Um, I remember like, like we, like people were hearing about O.J. Simpson possibly murdering his wife and her lover, and then like he was like running from the cops on TV in this white Bronco. He was doing that for like hours, and I, I remember like like watching this, like, like I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a fucking cat. I don't know what's going on, but I'm like, oh man, what if they catch this like criminal guy? And like I went outside to like jump on the trampoline with my brother. I remember telling my mom like, oh, it's like you know, tell me, tell me if like the, the police like finally catch him. I'm like, we're gonna jump on the trampoline for a while. So we fucking jump on the trampoline. And we eventually come inside and we see the whole fucking rest of it. But I have I have a bit of a special, weird, sick, kind of disgusting memory of that because like 
if you play the original Duke Nukem, when you go into the bar, when you look at the TV screens, it shows this white Bronco, like, just running, like, just, like, driving down the fucking highway. And it's, it's obvious that it's supposed to be, like, the O.J. Simpson, like, police chase thing. And um, it's hilarious. And... You know what it always reminds me of? Um, I don't remember exactly what number WrestleMania it was, but it was mm-hmm. one WrestleMania. Goldust fought Roddy Piper in, uh, in a street fight, like, outside the arena. Mm. Or maybe, I don't know, I haven't seen it in a while. Maybe my, I'm hazy. Maybe they started in the but, arena and then went outside of the arena because they were just fighting so hard they ended up outside somehow. That's about right. But, but uh, they, were, they, they, they were fighting outside, and, and they were just kicking the shit out. It, it's like, to this day, one of the most, like, real wrestling matches I've ever seen. Like, they were yeah. punching the yeah, shit out yeah. of each other. Because yeah. it was a street fight, and, you, and I guess they yeah. you can't really, like, Selling make it. Well. Just, and they were just bleeding and shit and just yeah. killing each other. And uh, at one point in the fight, uh, Goldust, either Goldust or Roddy, I don't remember which one, but one of them gets inside a white Bronco, and they do like a parody <laughs> of the OJ chase. No it, way! Yeah, in the Holy middle of the match. And, and and the match ends there, and it goes on with the rest wow. of the show, and, and, and there's more matches. Wow. It, it goes on with the show, there's more matches, and then later in the show, the chase ends up back at the arena, and they fight their way back out to the ring, and the match wow. ends in the ring. Oh it's, my god, it's one of the, it's it's the, one of the craziest amazing. matches ever. Holy it's awesome. shit, that's fucking I gotta brilliant. watch it again. Yeah, that is fucking brilliant. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, um, I say with that, uh, we will end this first iteration of the Bits and Booze Party cast. I think that's been about two, three hours, something like that. But that is the official length for a podcast worth listening to because uh, there's probably going to be at least one person who listened right until the end, and you're going to be like, oh, hey, hey, these guys these guys actually talk about some interesting things. And then you're going to be like, oh, what are they going to talk about next party cast? And then maybe you'll listen to that too. We're listening to the whole thing. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we'll be getting this going. We'll be getting this going. Um, anyways, Mr. Jesse Wood, play us out. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. I am Jesse Wood, and that's Johnny Old School. The world is our playground, and we are the pedophiles. I have AIDS. We both have AIDS. <laughs>